doors out of the box, man. Take ashwagandha. I don't know, meditate? <laughs> Zero. Zero. Brain fart. Thousands of dollars. Oh my god, thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> The only person you need to change to change the world is yourself. So on this episode of Don't Sweat It, we are going to talk about the psychology of money. A little more structure than usual, but I think it's fascinating that, Andre, you built a career by sharing your relationship to money, coming from an immigrant family to actually building your wealth through YouTube and documenting it all. And you have built an audience who watches your relationship to money through slot machines, through gambling. And that's just crazy to me. And we have these conversations when we're hanging out about the psychology of what you've been through that I find fascinating. We never get a chance to actually capture it on camera. So we can go in any direction throughout the podcast, but I have a few kind of things I want to come back to grounding with. And I want to start by, if you could just tell your relationship with money, how it changed over the years, and both of you could start there. And then I have some follow-up questions in that realm. I feel like an interesting observation between Dan and I is that since I'm more like in the investing side and you're more on the gambling side, it's still within the same realm, but it's like, <laughs> if you drew a gradient of like, <laughs> right, no, right. For sure. from where I start to where you are, <laughs> well, it's and like, I, and, I, la and later I want to talk about like the stock market is gambling or it's investing. Well, that's it what just kind of depends. Yeah. That yeah, spectrum. At, at on... what point does like the investing part of like, Oh, just dollar cost average <laughs> and the S and P 500 for 30 years. At what point does that become gambling? Because I've seen people talk about stocks and like, Tesla or whatever and they give these very specific like theses and like these you know arguments for why a stock's gonna go to whatever amount like triple quadruple in five years and I'm like where are you getting this <laughs> like I get that it's a cool fascinating story and and hopefully it grows to yeah. that but like so much of that is just literally your yeah. bet on something and yeah. for whatever reason convincing people of a narrative in the stock market is easier to do than I imagine being like, hey, bro, put put $100 on red. Yeah, <laughs> well, because so like, the sums are larger to start with, right? So are, that yeah. I think people see a bigger return. Um, but I think anything outside, like ETFs or mutual funds, is probably gambling in my mind. Oh, that's a good point. You know? Well, that's I, a good point. I will say, for all those theses people have about how to invest in the stock market, on my slot channel, which is still really new, um, Slot Curious, there are people who write, like, go to this machine at this time of day. This is how it works. These are the wilds to expect. The thesis is like a, is a two or three paragraphs long. Yeah. And it's a slot machine. It's yeah. guaranteed to take your money in the long run. It's you know, true. Yeah, it's, it's just funny. You can't convince those people that that's not true. Like, they are just convinced you can't play with your card in, or you can only play on Tuesdays after midnight. Right. Or, like, it's just, and you can't convince them. They're just. Well, it's interesting you said people outside of like mutual funds would be more perceived as like gambling. And yet, some of the, if not the wealthiest investors, are exactly that. They're completely outside of index funds, they're mm. very much like very specific stocks and very specific markets. And just like with gambling, people that I'm sure, I, I don't know what like the blue chip gambling <laughs> strategy is, <laughs> but I feel like there are gamblers that are incredibly wealthy, like especially in like the poker niches. Poker is exactly what I was gonna say. Oh, yeah. I think poker's the one reliable gambling if you're good, right? right but it's yeah. also, I mean, I guess stocks would be skill-based as well, right? You'd have to know what you're putting money into and right. why. And the same thing goes for poker. You need mm. to know why you're putting money in the middle. So yeah. yeah, you're right. Poker is closer to the stock market than stock Much machines closer. for sure. There is a strategy there that's hard to keep on, but if you do, it is a winning strategy. That's right. That's right. I've actually met somebody who came up with like some cheating device where it's like, it, it, I forget what it exactly looked like, but I think it was like a quarter that was like on a, like a surface of some sort and he would like put it in there and it would credit him almost like unlimited amount of quarters oh, and he could just yeah. play slots i mean well, i don't know if that's a thing that exists anymore they probably found a way around it guys yeah in jail. but have yeah. you ever seen in your world anyone where anyone's tried cheating or i've heard stories um but never like i don't think you can anymore like okay. in the olden days you could you would do stuff like that yeah or like there was a trick where you could stick a light underneath and point it like where the money <laughs> That's comes out right. so you used to be able to use a light to like give yourself infinite <laughs> yes. credits and stuff so they've kind of patched all that okay. and over the year and now like it's all ticket in ticket out yes. so like there's no money to go uh. in so they've made it a lot more secure. In my life, it was just in high school. There was like they just like kick the machine till the yeah. Doritos but I, fall I've out. Heard, like I've heard really cool like, stories. The money comes. Um, like one story, there was an old cabinet from. Uh, um, it was an old Buffalo cabinet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so 
what they would do is, is I don't know what they figured out about the RNG, but somebody would live stream. This is partly why they hated filming for the longest time because for this machine specifically, somebody would record or not record live stream to somebody in Russia and they would tell them exactly when to like change their bet or change the denomination or whatever it was to win. And like they had it figured out. So right. like, hmm. yeah, so like this one cabinet, like I don't know how they figured it out. So like they had to scramble to get rid of that cabinet and stuff. This was like 10 years ago or whatever. Because I would wonder if you, if, you, if you pull a slot machine and you get a persistent while that's there for like the next three. Yeah. Maybe if they didn't think through all of the outcomes, there could be a way to like increase the denomination right there or something. Or you could pick well, up a machine that was in that position when you started and it would have an advantage. So, no, they, they think about that stuff on development to where you can't yeah. really play with it. But there are AP players, advantage players that literally go around town from casino to casino looking for those opportunities. Mm. So like the sticky wild where you only need one more, but somebody got up. They look for those opportunities. Do you think those can beat the house edge or do you they, think those just so, yeah. minimize your losses? So those, that's why they do it. They're called advantage players. So the way those games work, uh, they, the art, let's say the RTP, uh, the return to player is like 85%, right? But the game actually starts at maybe 50% until you have like two locked wilds right. and suddenly it's at 120 or 150%. Right, mm. it, it, it fluctuates. Yeah. And so what these guys do is they go around looking for positive EV situations. Right. Right, so they're called advantage players. And I know a couple of them in town and uh, they make about 50K a year, the two Jeez. guys I know. So like, it's a decent living, Yeah. but not for all the- Have, have you guys seen yeah. Ocean's Eleven? Those yeah, movies, I love right? that movie. Oh, yeah. Do you remember like there was a sequence that they did in the movie where he was like, oh, well, if you put the coin in and then you press the button three times and you do this, it's like a sequence yep. and then you get a you know, certain outcome. Is there such a thing in the slot world? Because I'm, I remember reading somewhere that like true randomness doesn't exist. It doesn't. The mm. only thing that exists in terms of randomness is the decay of atoms. And this is something you probably know about more. Well, but we have to get into quantum mechanics, you <laughs> right. know, which of course we the, love to do. Right. So I'm talking podcast. about like theoretical physics <laughs> here, but like true randomness exists on the subatomic level. But like that means that every system has a vulnerability, which mm. means technically speaking, if, if you could figure out that combination, you could go to a slot machine at a certain time of day, right. at, do a certain type of sequence and like, kind of like what you highlighted and then totally game the system. Is sure. that possible? No, I mean, not, a, not that I know of, like it, it's right. super, con like they, theoretically it's possible. Theoretically, theoretically it's possible. But yeah, but you could also predict where the atoms in like a glass of soda are gonna be. Like that's impossible practically, but right. fundamentally right. it could be done. Yeah, so the way RNGs work in the slot world is is as far as I know anyway from by the way to... RNG random number generator right. I only know that because yeah. of Pokemon right so the... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I know that everyone learns it in different ways <laughs> right so those random number generators the way they work is since you can't do truly random right you can't just tell the computer pick a number out of the air or whatever um, what they do is they take like the temperature and the time of day and things wow. like that to get a random seed wow which is then so how it's they things get... you can't even control right but if you knew what they were using, you would, you could game it, but it, right. it's, they keep it so under. Not only do you so. not know the variables, you can't really even influence them if you did know them. Right, and the way yeah. like it, so the 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 slot machine cycles through numbers every millisecond, basically, like boom, 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 boom. It's going through numbers, and each number is a so correlated with a win or loss. Right, right. So it goes through them so fast. I don't even know how you try to game it. Like it's literally every millisecond or wow. whatever. But by the way, like a really fascinating thing that you might find interesting is if you've heard of Oracle in the blockchain world oracles i've heard of them i don't think i can explain them well enough. so when you write something into the blockchain obviously it's there forever right because the blocks lock it in and that number is truly the history of the blockchain unmutable uh, totally there but one problem is if you write something in like temperature there's a little bit of a you have to explain like where was the temperature taken exactly the longitude latitude like what was the the height of the measurement. So oracles are a blockchain system that actually takes like say 50 or 60 measurements of a temperature, then sort of averages it together and then 
puts a definition about like where it came from and then they lock that in as the truth but it's kind of the opposite like you're trying to kill the randomness so you can actually make a financial transaction based on temperature or something if you could explain that to a five-year-old yeah yeah I please could, eli5 yeah. well i just find it because because <laughs> we just have these problems where we want randomness and then we have these problems where we don't want randomness and they're just two sides of the same coin so i was i just think it's fascinating that blockchain deals with the exact opposite and slot machines try to create the randomness hmm. Oh, so you're saying so the, the exact opposite is how you might get random. Like you might go out there and take a bunch of different measurements. Well, you would use like the weather or something that can't right. be predicted mm. to try to make it random. So wait, how do blockchains use this to to do to solve which problem? Well, oracles just want the real world data that's kind of messy to be locked in in the way I a blockchain see. wants it. Like something that is truly that's the, almost the like true how history. you would try to predict the future of like the weather right like yeah. at any second it's like right. if you could lock in the world and pause it for just this yeah. moment and calculate every variable i guess is that what you're saying well you want, if you want to say it's the temperature in if you want to be really strict about it you just have to write incredible rules like i mean the temperature at this point with this device that has its batteries checked twice a week that's in las vegas that's 10 feet off the ground that's what i mean by weather or Jeez. you average a bunch together but it just takes those definitions so we can all be on the same page because it just gets so nuanced I understood some of that. Okay. <laughs> Barely. Like Anyways, 100%. all right. Yeah. Barely. But, it's, but it's interesting. Make a video. Do oracles. Explain I watched one of his videos about black... transformers and AI. I'm like, I'm lost. <laughs> no, Dude. explain. Like... Actually, if you ever spend the time to simplify blockchain oracles, if, I think if, it would be worth it. If I did a video on oracles, I just imagine like psychics with like crystal balls. <laughs> oh, like, I think about the oracle from the matrix. <laughs> yeah, the oracle from the <laughs> no, matrix. No, guys, you're all off on the wrong page here. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> you did scaling laws, you know, like I know you're venturing into that world. I feel like the the only thing that that people have been able to game with slots is having a YouTube channel. Yes, that's how people that's have right. gamed their losses. Yes, it's like you know that's what? the only way. <laughs> if I'm gonna lose money, I'm gonna make ten times off of ad revenue. Right. I mean, because slot machines are, are little math machines, right? You put a dollar in, you're gonna get eighty five cents back. Right. Now, how you get it back is the volatility and all that. But at the end of the day, after millions of spins, that's all they are. Like you put a dollar in, you get 85 cents Is back. 85 cents a hypothetical number or is that the actual amount? That's about what, what the strip is at right now. Okay. Roughly. Are, are there certain casinos or machines that mm -hmm. are better than that? Or is yeah. it the best? So the way, the way these manufacturers do when they make a game, they usually do like a low end, a high end, and a mid. So like you, they'll give you three options. You can, you can buy this slot machine at 85%, you could buy it at 88%, or you could buy it at 90 or 92%. When you say buy it, what do you mean? Or lease it. Do they so get the to casinos, they have to buy these slots or lease them. Do they I get see. to choose that parameter? Yeah, like the, if you the buy, casino decides. Because I've always heard a machine like Buffalo is paying less. Is that because it's a Buffalo machine or is that just because those are popular? So then the casinos buy them and set the settings. No, no. Like every Buffalo machine comes with probably three options for the casino hmm. to choose and from. And they can switch it at any time? Uh, yes, but it, it rec there's like regulatory oh. hurdles, hurdles, so you can't do it right away. You have to like turn off the machine, oh. get permission from the gaming commission. It takes like hours. So in that case, are the most expensive hotels like the Wynn and Bellagio probably also the worst to play at? Do, because they just have more people and more money, so they, they can set their profits higher? Yeah, like, like the... the it, it's your best bet is that it is horrible in any like on the strip but like recently the numbers came out and downtown was worse than the strip wow like you know uh, wait so speaking of regulation that's the question i wanted to ask yeah. what prevents me if i was a casino owner from putting a couple machines in that have like a 40 percent payout or whatever it is? you can't like i said the manufacturers the only offer these games in three usually set payouts well, what if i bribe the manufacturer and i was like hey guys well, I'll split if you the start profit. bribing the manufacturer they don't make them that way <laughs> well they i'm just, just saying like how would anyone find out what these numbers are like but that's what regulation is for like uh, right but for, from a from a practical perspective though like how do they check if those machines are following those rules so every single slot on the floor goes through a, a, a process where they, they, the company I think is called GLI, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Maybe I have the wrong name, but I think it's GLI. And you, you send your code there. 
I they see. go through all the code. So there's like inspections. Yes. Okay. Every that, single game that has to sense. go through that. Does that happen every day or like how often does that all happen? All the time. Like it's, it's nonstop because every manufacturer is putting out hundreds of games a year mm. usually. If, or see. maybe, I don't know, maybe not hundreds. but Okay. Um, and every game has to go through that process and it has to be approved and then it could be on slot floors. By the way, I, was, I did a video for Dylan Curious that was about AI in casinos and I found out that Kino is the worst game <laughs> to play and I I grew up thinking like oh Kino seems so fun and I would always pick exactly 1 through 20 because I'm like it's the same odds as everything else but it just like it just eats I think it's 25% edge or something and I was just like that's just giving money away fun fact my mom like, used to be a Kino runner at Bellagio <laughs> so oh, wow. she actually worked and I to this day I have no idea uh, what that game is or how do you play it wow how do you play that game I, I mean you just pick 20 and you just pick 20 numbers and see what comes up from the ping pong balls but it just yeah. I didn't really and the, I think Wheel of Fortune so it's was really lottery? bad too it's kind of like that's all yeah, it's like a, yeah. Well, get, the lottery get, is the worst. You get eighty you numbers. Play. You pick uh, one through ten. I think you, the minimum you could do is like two or three. I don't know. Yeah, and then it said I, that I, if you play blackjack optimally, that's one of the best single deck blackjack. And then there was something with backrat where you can make a red or a black bet that's like almost fifty fifty too. But you have to do something beforehand. But yeah, those are the absolute those, best odds. Yeah, those are like the best things Bacara you can play at a casino. Versus the worst blackjack. blackjack. But yeah, the worst I think was Wheel of Fortune and Kino, if I remember right. Mm. Yeah. But now, like I, I, I've gone to Peppermill and Reno a couple times. Yeah. And uh, Peppermill, on their slot floor, not one game is below ninety four percent. Whoa. So like each casino is totally different, and it's up to them to decide which. <laughs> volatile or which percentage payback they pick i feel like the key to that like determining what percent is like we want it to be just like high enough for our own profits without people getting too upset that they're not winning enough it's like is that the balance like how do they determine that for the uh, i a think it's question. it's just how There's much money and how greedy the casino is that. you know and yeah. how much they need business right. and how like how the audience reacts to how they're doing. They're like at Peppermill, your money lasts longer. Right. And you could feel that even though it's still, it's still relatively the same, right? Playing the same machine here at 85% payback and over there at 94%, your experience is pretty much gonna be the same. Right. But your money will last a little longer there. And over like millions of spins, you'll do a lot better there. Right. But in the short run, you could win a jackpot here just as easily as you can there. Even yeah, though I would love to put a spreadsheet together for that because I bet there's so many factors. Like if, if you're at the win and people are just walking in and walking out, they're coming up and down the strip, then yeah, you'd probably want to milk that more than somebody where you get a recurring customer, someplace like the station casinos where somebody comes in every week. You can't just like take advantage of them and then they're gone. Like right. they, you want them to like enjoy. Plus I bet some machines are like probably more more cartoony might kind of be more engaging or some might be like more tough and you just want to like like the buffalo and you just gotta like go hard you know yeah. mm -hmm. in vegas your your best bet is definitely the the locals casinos surrounding us you know like not the strip not yeah. downtown maybe even the exact slot floor like the one on the like you know at, at grocery stores the items on the edge of the aisle are usually like more profitable than the ones in the middle so it might even be something like that actually that's a good question how are slot machines at like the grocery stores at Smith's or something. They're probably the war the lowest payback. <laughs> really? Airport, yeah, what about Because they're not looking to retain customers. They're right. just looking yeah, to get the most too. out of somebody who wants to throw 20 bucks That's in after the That's a great point. What about, yeah, airports? Uh, I think the airport would probably be the lowest, too. Mm. You know? Jeez. It's um, biggest, man. Although just I did I, a bunch of money at the airport. I was like, Ooh, although this last it. trip, I almost missed my plane going to Reno to Peppermill because I got a jackpot like... 10 minutes before oh, and you had to my wait for flight the and they took forever and they literally <laughs> like ran to the gate they're like can you please wait we're waiting to pay him how much did you win it was like 2500 okay that's yeah. amazing it was enough that I, I was like i can't just walk away right you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure yeah i feel like i have to get another flight if you don't get here yeah wait so the last time you were here Stressful. you were kind of on a winning streak what's going on right now gambling wise yeah um it's it's up and down i've i've, I've had a couple great wins this year like I've had like two grand jackpots. I've had an eighteen two grand jackpots. Yeah, like one was 2, for five thousand. No, one was five thousand dollars. A grand jackpot. Um, and it was, and then one was three, I think. Wow. And I've had, uh, but I had an eighteen thousand dollar win recently, which was amazing, and the video is just crushing it. That's incredible. Yeah, it's like three hundred k views in two weeks or something like so far. Jeez. Yeah, that one's fun. That was fun. But the, you know, you also lose. Like yesterday, I filmed. Uh, four videos with with my assistant and and i lost every single penny i put in the machines yesterday oh my god rough how much did you lose 
A lot. Like how much is a lot? A lot. So <laughs> between the four videos, I think it cost me about eight and a half. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's all. That's depressing. See, yeah. even though you're up by like 20 grand or whatever it is, it's, it's still like... It it's hurts. heartening. It hurts. It yeah. Hurts. Well, that was the psychology of money that just fascinates me when you guys talk about it. Because you, you can know at the end of the month you're profitable from YouTube ads, but you still can't not feel like just like crap when you lose money. Like, oh, yeah. Just Especially like, days like yesterday where like literally every hundred I put in just vanished. Yeah. I didn't get play time for my money. I didn't get like, okay, like usually a bad day is still like I'll lose like three, four grand and, and but then I'll win like a $1,500 jackpot and then I'll win like a $500 thing, you know? And, it, yeah. and I get closer to even, but yesterday was just nonstop. And thankfully those days are rare. Do you, do you have advice? Like how do I keep my heart rate from like going up when I'm playing slots, when I'm starting to win or lose? Like how, how do I not get so emotionally I don't know. Meditate. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because it's like at first I'm just playing and Take I'm just like I'm just like yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sometimes meditate. I'm just like narrating like it's no big deal, and yeah. then all of a sudden you kind of almost like you get caught in a conversation, and all of a sudden you get like really upset or excited, and you're like, this is just a game. Like this is not your life, Dylan. You like, meditate you? or Xanax. Okay. You know, like. <laughs> I guess my worry is if you think about it from like a mathematical perspective, it's like video games. Yeah. If you didn't have like a YouTube income, like it just. It, it the inevitability is zero like yeah over time yeah it's a losing proposition it's a losing proposition you have to go to work and make money somewhere else yeah, yeah. yeah. it's 100 percent entertainment and i always tell people that. right i'm like you need to play for entertainment only money you could lose think of it like going to a nice restaurant and and a movie but instead you're going to the win you know what yes. i mean or the rampart and like you're you're that's that money that's going to be spent tonight and we're going to have fun and go home yeah if you win that's just gravy I will say one of the most baller things we did recently is like we all went out, but we had like 15 people with us for Taco Tuesday. Yeah, it was like 16, I think. 16. Yeah. <laughs> no one knew, but you were like, oh, I got this. And then your host came over and he was really cool and he was really nice. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, I got you, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, Dan, we've seen how much he puts in the slots. Yeah. You guys just like, eat for free. How much money you have to be making the casino or like uh, losing yeah. to like justify. Well, remember Vegas Mets had $1,000 a day every day. It's like yeah, an entire year. I mean, that's, I it's guess three, that's, that's the. That's like this, you buy a whole house just in food every year. That's the best part of. of just, it's for sure a side, like a great side benefit to having a channel. Like you could still have that as a high roller and like. Right. But you're just losing money. Right. right. Like, but with the YouTube thing on the side like not only are you making money yes. but you're getting all these awesome perks mm. like my host the same one you met that night came up to me the other day he's like hey by the way man like if you ever want tickets to anything at t-mobile or allegiant wow. just let us know we got boxes at both that you can you're welcome to could you have gotten you want. tickets to the super bowl i if i asked early enough i think i could have oh, okay. uh, but at towards the end they were like minimum but, 10 g's yeah. but andre does that even impress you because you make enough money to just you can spend that much money on food all the time. But it's if cooler you want. to get it free. Or is it just that you want to see some host walk <laughs> up and be like, you can go to the Super Bowl? Like, I, I, yeah, I guess. I just think the cool, it just makes you feel like awesome when you're like, this is for, this is free. You know, I know yeah. you could buy it, but especially when you show up with a bunch of but friends for you, that would and feel, they're just but like, but the psychology, you'd feel different. You just yeah, want to know that so. it's like given that it's to covered. you. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. It's really nice. It's a yeah. nice perk. It's a, and it's nice to be able to take your friends out. Like we eat, for free five days a week if we want to usually like that's it's crazy great. yeah jeez have you ever had any uh i yeah, guess I'm to, the, I'm to the point now where i go to a buffet and like i barely eat it because i'm just like dude we just live the life with that. <laughs> well that's a it's good like, question does it does any of that get old because broccoli. like to somebody like, who doesn't have that experience every day does it eventually like the novelty wear out of it or how do you feel about it no no <laughs> like, i mean why would it but and plus like you go different places right one day we're eating at hank's at green valley ranch one day we're at the buffet at rampart like we're different places every day so like it's always a Dude, different in one way it's yeah. even cooler because we went to hank's one time which is like everyone's so fancy and dressed up and we're just like baseball caps on like playing on laptops like because <laughs> it doesn't even yeah it's like we can just get work done and not make it such a thing yeah well, and like and like when you're a high like a high roller which i'm i don't consider myself but i guess the amount i spend because i gamble so often is equivalent almost like with the the manager the gm of, of hank's actually came up and was like Here's my card if you ever need anything. And wow. it's so like you get that sort of treatment. Did, does that ever impress girls? Like, have you ever used that to, to impress? I've never tried to impress anyone with that. <laughs> okay. So, so I don't know, <laughs> but I don't like to be flashy and like sure. that sort of thing. So, well, most of your subscribers, would you say, are they from Vegas or kind of? No, um, it, they're pretty much 70. I'm 
70 per, 72 or 4 percent American, so like three quarters uh, U.S. Okay. But then that's split up and, and kind of like how you'd expect it to. Like the most are in California and then New York, Major Texas. Cities. Yeah, the, 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 what you'd expect, the usual suspects. Okay. I think I'm 6 percent Nevada. Okay. Something like that. Well, you guys have been working together, right? Like you have a slot channel as well you guys have a couple <laughs> we got to get into yeah, this dylan's we gotta, got a slot channel now we're trying <laughs> we to we're to trying promote to promote dylan's channel right yeah now. <laughs> slot curious is uh just so a crazy experience this video is sponsored by done. dylan he is paying me thousands of dollars oh my to god talk thousands of dollars <laughs> <laughs> he finds out how much he pays after you have after i promote him that's how andre does his deals <laughs> promote you first and then tell you what you owe <laughs> But yeah, it's been fun. Like I've got a uh, 30 videos up so far. It's been just trying to figure out all the mechanisms. And one thing I really can do in my life is sometimes get into something and then find a love for it. And at first I didn't understand slot machines or love them. And then you, it's just like playing a video game. Like the way you can get into like, uh, I don't know, Pokemon and watches and stuff. It's the <laughs> same thing. You just can't not have fun when you're playing Planet Moolah or Coin Trio or like you do big jack or the uh, carnival the one that you played you remember how much fun you had it was like once you yeah. start playing that you're just it's just like a video game man it's really really fun i mean they are video you, games you've never yeah. been into pokemon right no I, I skipped that one yeah. yeah you can tell by the way you pronounce pokemon <laughs> pokemon <laughs> like he would have know you, now speaking of pokemon generated. just an yeah. aside have you tried pal world no, I haven't yet, actually. Okay, because it's like all the rage. It, yeah, the, Pokemon the crazy with one guns? that's like Pokemon. Pokemon with yeah, guns. Yeah, yeah people it, say yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, I haven't played it yet. Okay. I, was, I wish I had time, but it looks crazy. It's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's sold so much. I don't understand how they're like actually allowed to exist. I think they're going to get sued into oblivion. Because like, even the models are like very, very close. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So how has your gambling been like with the slots? Are you up? Are you down? Do you have any crazy wins? So the biggest one I had was $320, which was just way bigger than any other wins. And then mostly it's like a slow grind from like 100 bucks down to 50 And then sometimes I'll cut the video or maybe we'll go down to, to zero. But I've had no huge, huge losses. I think on average I'm losing probably about maybe 30 bucks a video or something like that he's also betting really small uh, all That's pennies like because you know i like, minimum i don't have an audience i don't yet i don't have like maybe i can invest i told everybody if i get to ten thousand subs i'll up the bets a little bit but i'm sure. just playing the pennies right now and just trying to get a feel for my favorite machines that makes sense 30 dollars yeah. a little video i guess isn't yeah horrible but it's so fun. like i will tell you that at first it looks like nothing's on the screen because your your mind doesn't know what to look for but when you start realizing like what's persistent what's a wild um like when the wolf comes on screen and i go into a feature or a Can bonus game i'm like, like what the? i remember the wolf what does that do yeah well that i mean i i like a lot of games have features or bonuses where you would just go into a whole different dimension of free spins, some kind of new graphic comes up and you can just feel the energy because it's going to be wins. Like, you know, you're going to walk away with more money than normal. So it's better than just the experience of the line win because it's its own little moment and you want to share that with your audience and you yeah. don't get that when you just play slot machines until, until you kind of earn it or you're lucky and it happens. Is there a point at which you're going to stop or, or cause if you're not making money from it, then it's like, yeah, eventually, I mean, uh, you do know, you have like a goal or a time <laughs> or a, like a dollar amount that yeah. you're like, okay. I'm I mean, you collect more information about when it's time to quit. I mean, there's two schools of thought. Like sometimes you have to like stay with something until it works, but obviously people will just run themselves into the ground that way. And like Dan told me before, like crazy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different outcomes. So you have to, I guess, just learn day by day. And with all of social media, you know, I haven't quite had as much luck as, as or skill as you guys. And I just think, OK, what is it that I can learn from this? What do I need to change? Or is it just the wrong time? That's wrong actually place? an interesting perspective that you had. Like, I've always wondered why someone new to slots is like kind of oblivious to what's happening. Cause I'm like, it's so simple, but he just kind of explained it in a way. Like when you're new, it's, you don't know what to look at or look for. And so like, it's all confusing to you, but mm -hmm. like, I always, I'm like, why? It's just like, this is the square. These are the symbols that are coming down. You just look left to right, see what you got. But it, it, it's, it's interesting to see like someone who didn't understand it and is now understanding it, how their per perception of the game changed. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably the second, my second video, I was like, oh, line wins can be like a W shape. You know, like even that was just like, oh, line wins aren't always just like straight across. Right. And all of a sudden the game just got like that much more interesting to me. And now I had one more thing to look for. I think I've, after seeing a couple dozen 
slot videos, I still can't figure out what I'm looking at. Really? <laughs> no. Like, really? Other than when it's really obvious, like it's a crazy symbol of a lion or a coin or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's going to be good, but I don't know how many you're supposed to get or yeah. what they're supposed to look like. And No, it's funny. You got to invest a little bit of time. just. To get, I mean, imagine playing like a video game like Madden or something where you're just like, I don't know how any of these plays work. But then once you get it and you're like, oh, this is how a safety should run and here's how I should like position sure. my chess pieces compared to theirs all of a sudden the game just becomes more fun well let me ask you guys this what, how do you prioritize investing in the business that is youtube and slot play versus say gambling in and or investing in the stock market like what percentage of your income do you allocate or do you think about it like that like in terms of like okay cool i made whatever it is ten thousand this month and i'm gonna put this much towards gambling. I'm gonna put this much towards the S and P 500. Is there is there a system that you have? No, I wish I did. I wish I was smarter with my money in that sense. I just kind of, uh, on a whim, I'm like, you know what? I should put five or ten k back into some more into stocks, and yeah. then I'll just do it, right? And but I don't. I should be doing like ten percent, twenty percent, or whatever. And, and but I don't. Okay. I just I've never been great with money, and I've gotten better. Yes. You know, over the years, and especially as I've made more and more, you have to kind of get better with it. Right. But I'm still not the best with it. Well, the, when it, like you asked that question of P Piff the Magic Dragon, remember when we were down in the uh, down in the sauna yeah, days? Yeah. And like he was like, no, I, I take all my money and I invest it back in myself. Like I am a celebrity on the strip. I have a show. I can you know do advertising that brings more people to it, yeah. and I can ask for more money and get a higher revenue stream. So, I think it just depends on if you can invest in yourself in a way that really makes sense and scales. Yeah. You probably shouldn't allocate the same way as a random person who's working sure. at a job that's just buying stock. Right. You want to put your money where the greatest ROI is or for your opportunity. But it's interesting. Um, brain fart. Yeah. Totally for, oh, no. I was making a video about how much money you should save by age. And I was looking through all these different guides from like Fidelity, Dave Ramsey, all these people, how much money they recommend you should have by yeah. certain age brackets. And for me, and I imagine for you as well, it's hard because so many of my expenses are tied to YouTube as well. Yes. So my expenses, the money that's coming out, it isn't an accurate assessment of mo what my real expenses would be if all of this stuff would just disappear, if, if I didn't have anyone or anything to pay. And that I think is something that's hard for me to figure out, but yeah. especially with gambling, I have to put like, yeah. it's a variable amount every month, right? Like, it's not a fixed amount where I could be like, I'm only spending 10 grand this month. Right. No, if you, if you lose eight in one day, getting just four videos, you got to make, you know, well, let's assume that you stopped playing tomorrow. Uh, would, could you approximate how much money you think you'd spend per month or per year? What do you mean if I stop playing? Oh, just your like, let's just say you stopped gambling. So you like mortgage and your food. Yeah, and... like what are your fixed costs right now? Fist, fixed expenses. Yeah, without without the YouTube stuff. Um, I mean, I own my house, uh, home outright like we talked about last time. Yeah. So my, and I, and I have no debt. So like, oh, that's really so you have good. to start buying food for the first time. Yeah. So <laughs> like, uh, have I have to start no idea. <laughs> my fridge is literally just a few bottles of water. Uh, okay. like, like, you know, like leftovers like, from the casino yeah, last you night. You have to start cooking some mayo and, and ketchup. Sure. Like it, it, okay. So it's probably minimal. It's probably like 20, 30 grand a year. If that, yeah. Like my electricity, but you know, very basic stuff. I don't have a car payment. I don't have a, a mortgage. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. So With, my fixed cost would be super low. That's really good. Yeah. Like, so way. for both of you, would you say that having a financial windfall led to happiness? Hmm. I think what led to happiness for me is just the ability to have the freedom to do what I want. Like literally the other day, grandma's like, Hey, I'm going to Japan. And then our friends were thinking of coming with us. I was like, I'd go. And he's like, really? Would you? Yeah, here's the plan. Like that would be a fun trip for all of us. We're like, yeah, I'd be down. And then I just basically booked the flights the same night that he told me and okay. we're leaving in like a week. Yeah. To, to Tokyo, which is so cool for like an eight day trip. I think that's really what's what's uh, brings me happiness. And I, I've always equated money to like having money to to being healthy. You yeah. just like you never wake up every morning and you're like, I'm so grateful to feel this way. Right. But I remember every time I get sick and I wake up with a fever, or I'm like, I'm coughing mm. and sneezing. I'm like, I wish I was grateful for when I had it, when I was healthy. And I think money's the same way. It's like one of those things where when you have it, or even if you have a lot of it, you never wake up. You're like, I'm so grateful. Yeah. But when you don't have it, you wake up. You're like, it's the only thing you can think it's about. It's the only thing you It's oh, the yeah. only thing that's on your mind. It's kind yeah. of the hedonic treadmill from a different perspective. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's so like money. I feel like 
having money frees you up yes. from, from worrying about basic necessities. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily give you happiness, but it allows you the freedom it, to find happiness. Exactly. It leads you to the ability to explore where you could find happiness. Yes. But like, I think, I think it's impossible to find that true happiness if you're worried about how am I going to pay rent every yes. month? How am I going to make my car payment? Oh my God, I had a $200 expense I didn't expect. Right. And now I'm scrambling. Right. Yeah. Like, those are that's hard to live with it is and, and so many people live that way so i guess the answer is money does bring you happiness but not directly it's not like an, directly it's indirectly yeah so because totally. those one and we can cut this out podcast if you want but it's like you do have quite a bit of financial independence but still you seem to often want to talk about like a lot of future worries right like whether it be about like ai or long-term future or so people like not finding love or people in your life not being there or something like why do you think your mind does seem to focus on that sometimes i'm incredibly even, even anxious. if you're probably safer than the majority of people or at least yourself in the previous version of your life yeah i i mean I, part of it is definitely that i'm incredibly anxious so i'm always worried like i'm always expecting the the bottom to drop you know like to fall out like i just always that's just yeah my mo is like okay things are going well but why they're gonna you know <laughs> like, like something and how long right right when is this gonna <laughs> fall apart and I, my life's gonna be ruined let's right. plan for that right you know so like part of that and part of it is like we're human so we have a negative negativity bias like that's just kind of ingrained in us like that's why the news is always negative like it doesn't talk about all the charity and happiness going on it talks about like someone getting shot and right. stuff and it's because we are, are biased to, to, to listen and, and look for negativity and it's just a defense mechanism right it helps keep you safe to look around for negative things right um, so there's that and there's my anxiety and and uh yeah like, like dylan said i'm i'm constantly worried and now i've got like this existential worry about our future and and you know what ai is going to do to us and it's it's going to be yeah it's yeah. going to be not as like, nuclear weapons there's always something to worry about for yeah. sure and the world's getting and changing so fast and there's more wars than there has too. been for a while so i i do get that but still we have to just like realize that even the richest people from a few thousand years ago would love to be some of the poorest people in our society today and right millions of humans have lived lives that were much shorter and more painful than ours yeah i definitely wish i was more grateful or, or at least practiced being more grateful yeah. like the only time it kind of happens is randomly with like i'm playing with my dogs and stuff and then suddenly like a calm will come over me oh, really? like, oh this is so nice yeah like i'm just happy right now it's just me and my dogs it is true i've seen rito do that to you <laughs> just jumps on you yeah <laughs> Yeah, I feel like getting into those moments of gratitude is like the best thing ever. Yeah, I do have exercises for it that make me in that mode more so than other days. Hmm. And it's when I revisit the places in my childhood that I grew up wishing to have the things I have now. Yeah. So, Wait, so would you say you would say happiness is a skill? Yeah, I think so. That you're oh. working on. Yeah, it's a I muscle think so. you're learning to it exercise. Is. It's an exercise work. you can do. And for me anyway, what triggers it is again revisiting moments and times and places in my life that. I was like a, a, in a different circumstance in yeah. my life and it just brings you back and you're like, you're, you're lucky to be where you are today. And it's crazy how I, I did that stuff even way before YouTube. Like when I just had a career making 50 K a year and just, you know, living in a house and just being like, I'm so grateful to be here. I would have been proud of myself when I was like a nine year old. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Wow. I feel like that, that helps a lot. And also what really helps is traveling seeing how other people live especially in poor countries mm -hmm. and just yeah. seeing that and and seeing how happy they are with less and now that we're actually going so to I, japan I identify that. japan's like lifestyle is so minimal yeah and people in japan they're they're not extremely materialistic they live very simply and it's it's gonna be cool to see isn't japan where they don't have any homeless people because they don't like allow it or it's not culturally accepted is I'm that is, sure. i don't know if that's south korea or japan yeah but like one of them there's like almost no homeless people i believe that i don't know i haven't been to japan but we'll see because yeah. i was always shocked how happiness has a baseline when um jen and i went to india for magicians without borders i know it's like doctors without borders but magicians, magicians. go but we went to like orphanages and some of the worst parts of india like everything was wrong with these kids and there were kids laughing playing soccer with a brick like just kicking around this like old brick and that was the soccer ball and they were just trying to get into a goal which was the wall and like they're just laughing and enjoying things and i was like oh my god i can't believe like they're yeah. so happy and well, there's something here that i need to learn well i think it's relative right like if that's all you know then then you can't just sit there 
like crying all day that you right. don't have more. You you learn to live with and and, and yes. be happy with what you have. Yeah. And I think it's just relative all the way up. Right? That's why like, I think it's a good, I it's not a good idea, but it's it's a good thing to have a baseline that is yours in terms of anxiety. Like it's good to moderate it obviously and maybe have it a little bit lower, but having that baseline of like. Oh, something's going to go wrong. Like, I don't want to get too comfortable here is a good thing because then yeah. you can always reflect where you are now versus where you could be, yeah. which is lower. So that, so that contrast and circumstance is where happiness is. Whereas if you were to be comfortable and accept that this reality is who you'll be forever. Yeah, I know that's the only thing mm. you look forward to is going up. Yeah. And the difference between where you are oh, now and up is yeah. happiness. And if it's not in that direction, you'll be not miserable. Happy yeah. miserable. You know, yeah. you know what though, Andre, in a sense though, you're playing with fire because out of all the friends you could have, one of your best friends is the only other financial YouTuber bigger than you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you have to be surrounded by like the one person in Las Vegas who does like just what you do, but on a little bit bigger scale. Yeah. <laughs> and I, has, like, I don't think I compare myself to like Graham or anyone else who's bigger than me. I, I'm like, I always think like, I'm so like lucky to even be matter, mentioned yeah. in the same like vein as, as some of these people are that I looked up to and watched, you know, but it's like winning the lottery, becoming an influencer. And it totally is. Yeah. And I wish more people were clear and transparent about it, but. I think there are certain things you, you can influence and like roll the die, so to speak, more so, but you can't out influence the outcome of the die. No, of course not. You right. Just, and, and again, like I, I, life is just like what happens to be in front of you. Right. Like, yeah. so, so right now things are great, but it, I always look back. I'm like, don't lose touch. Cause like sometimes, I don't know if you find yourself kind of losing touch, like with the Japan thing, right? Like, yeah old you would have been like how am i going to afford a right. trip to japan right. like and then like i gotta that's going to come out of savings if i even have that much right but now like you don't it's not even a second thought how much right. it costs to fly to japan right right and that's like you you can easily kind of fall out of touch that's true with the average person and what regular life is like it's for most true. people it is true yeah that's why i never want to get comfortable with where i am now and sometimes I've noticed myself shopping and looking at things where I'm like, why am I looking at this stuff? Like, this is not okay. Like, right. I don't want to be looking at a stupid Rolex for $20,000 or whatever it is. Um, and, and I think it's like in the zeitgeist of my mind, more so because the people in my circles talk about it or have it. And it's not that I'm trying to keep up with, with them. The Joneses, it's, not, it's, right. not, it's not that. It's not the like, I gotta be like this. No, person. it's like those kids in India playing soccer with a break. Exactly. Like you just, it's, it's just if your that environment becomes your and you reality and what you're surrounded yeah. by, you're like, oh, this is normal. That's exactly it. And it plants a seed inside yeah. you, right? Like when I wasn't well, at all, like at all, but I, I was comfortable from YouTube. Like I drove a Kia. Right. And I was like, I got a brand new Kia. Life is good. I don't have to, you yes. know, and then now I drive like a $50,000 car right. and I've been happy with it until I started hanging out with you guys <laughs> with like $200,000 cars. Right. I'm like, do I need a better car? Right. And, and it's not that you're trying to keep up. No. It's just that you're like, oh, well, I, I could do this. Yeah. Like it, it wouldn't hurt me. Like, oh, it'd be really nice to right. have a nice car. Exactly. You know? like, and even after, though my car is great, I love it. It's right. Funny. But suddenly I'm like, ooh, do I want an Audi R8? Like, <laughs> right, you right. know? Because I just saw Andre fawning over the cyber, <laughs> cyber truck this week. So yeah, I'm like, I, no, I saw the cyber that. truck and I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, but it's so cool. It's really cool. It's a Is cool it? car. Yeah. I like it. Did you hear about the rust problems they're having? I didn't see that. Oh, so like, oh, with that stainless steel? Yeah, like any like little bit of like like dead insects or bird poop, it's rusting. Really? Yeah. Oh, where, on the bottom of it or? All of it. All the whole, All the whole body. Every triangle in there. Yeah. Oh, geez, I got to look those Yeah, you got to look it up. So that's what's kind of the, the news now, what I've been hearing. That's weird because I remember the, I mean, the DeLoreans are still around and they're, they look fine. There's two different ways to cure stainless steel apparently. And like one way is like much harsher for the environment and like a, like a tougher process. Right. And then the new way they kind of do is like citric acid and not nearly. And I, I think see. it's, it's an issue of that, that from what I read. Sense. Yeah. It's cured differently. So it, it rusts much easier. Wow. Yeah. So I have some interesting statistics I wanted to tell you about. Oh, so there was a study done where people did various activities like eating junk food, taking drugs, smoking nicotine, and they measured their dopamine levels. And I had a question for you, Andre, do you think nicotine or gambling provides more dopamine for the average person? I, I, I don't think I'd be good to answer that because I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever tried nicotine in my life, and I don't think I've gambled enough to say that I've done it enough. 
but why don't you ask him one of the two things on the list that he's done junk food will double your dopamine 200 percent increase drugs are kind of a scale between 300 and, and several thousand depending on the drug but nicotine and alcohol are only about 40 percent more dopamine than you expect but gambling took a whopping 500 higher than social media which was 100 higher than pornography 250 higher than netflix and tv which was 100 and higher than video games on average at 150. Uh, are you surprised, I guess, Dan, that gambling is such a dopamine spike, more I, so than video games and social media, which I just thought would have been on par? Would have been, I, yeah. I'd stick to the 250 percent. It's free. It's safe. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! This is G-rated. We can't be talking about. I'm we can't saying. be talking about 250 percent increases. At the comfort in of your dopamine. own home, it's accessible. It's, right. You know. From now on, whenever you want to be like 250 percent increase in dopamine last night, we'll know what you're I talking about. I will think about. of Dylan. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, oh, I just increased my dopamine 250. Like, come on, bro. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> I just text him right after. <laughs> yeah, it worked. No, it 200, worked. 200. I'm talking about junk food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as somebody who's kind of done all those things. Um, you've done 250. <laughs> I've done no. the junk food. I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've done the nicotine. I used to smoke 10 years ago now. Like, uh, uh, so I've done them all and I could see nicotine being lower. Like, it, it, yeah, but it, that's why I think you have to smoke so often. Like as yeah. soon as you start, like you need another one. I think that's probably why do people, you, do you have an addictive personality? Would you say? Uh, I imagine so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've done everything under the sun at this point. But, so. but have what you been you able do? to quit it after you've done it? Yeah, you thank have. God. Okay, so thank you God. are able to control. Well, <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, so uh, I heard Ben Affleck once say that addiction is one of those things where you can't really get out of it until you suffer enough where yeah. you're like, I'm done mm. suffering from this. Right. And so that's kind of what it was with cigarettes. That's how it was with drugs. That's how it was with all the things I've quit over the years. You get to a point where you're like, I'm just sick of myself as this person and I'm done. So if somebody right. offered you your same, the same amount of income you're making from slot machines right now to quit and never play again. To would never you, play again? Yeah, to never play again. Be like, whatever your income is, they'll just say, oh. But I, I would still keep making yeah, they'll money. Just, just, it's just a magic question. Yeah, but if yeah, they magically yeah. gave you the money, but you couldn't ever play slot machines again or you'd lose it. Yeah. You yeah. could just quit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would miss it and I, and I would be tempted and stuff, but I don't, yeah, you don't I could, I could walk away. I, I would probably crash pretty hard. Maybe with 500% dopamine spikes. Because like, I've had spikes. my dopamine levels like pro like through the roof for so long now that's mm. what i was wondering 500 percent dopamine spike and you've been doing it for 11 or 12 years yeah daily daily like twice a day every day it does yeah. feel like your body might withdraw i don't know so is dan living at 500 percent dopamine level that's what i was wondering like constantly right yeah or maybe you kind of acclimated to it and it doesn't spike the same way well, i have or, ADHD I don't know. and you know? i have uh okay. like so i might i think my dopamine baseline is super low Right. So like I, 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 I part of me, mm, me maybe is yeah. like, I when I got a better role, it, uh, seek, that. right. I think that's why over the years I've done all these things that kind of spike your dopamine is mm. because my baseline is so low. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's fascinating. So I guess you're living it at the highest or really high point constantly, constantly. I worry about the crash mm. from that. Cause like when I stopped doing, uh, uh, uh drugs, like I crashed so hard for like years. Like yeah. it was a deep depression and it's cause you're, you're kind of just right. Like you're literally crashing. You know, we, ha I have met some of your friends that are financial people and they do seem like they live in the gambling dopamine finance world mm. a little bit more than the Warren Buffett. Like who would you say? No, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to say, but, the, but a couple of the people that are just like, we have to talk about this stock right now. Like it's going to pop like, mm. I'm worried for you that like if you stop and your YouTube stops, would you be able to derive the same level of dopamine from other things you do? Because assuming the income stops, you probably wouldn't want to be gambling at the level that you are right no. now. But then does that make it harder because you're like, well, I don't want to play $2 hands. It's not exciting. It's not what I remember. It's you know hard I mean? to go back down. So I feel like, like there will be that studies is, from this. That is yeah. absolutely the case. And I like, think that's happening with my channel too. People are like, it's one cent bets. I yeah. can watch Vegas Mad. I can watch Vegas Low Roller. Like it's not the same. Yeah, and and there's definitely an aspect of that. Like I I know certain channels that that when their revenue went up, they went their their bets went higher and higher and higher 
but now they're at a point where their revenue is not matching their bets anymore and they're struggling. They can't go back down. Right. So but it, it's it, still the same icons on the screen. We still get the same bonus games. You don't, you don't get, it's, it's the dopamine thing, right? Like once you get used to that higher dopamine level from betting more and like <laughs> winning more. But they're not even, it's not even their money. They're just, they're just watching my money or like, you know what I mean? Like it's no, not, but, but <laughs> viewers get the same dopamine hit that, yeah. well, by watching than they, then yeah, I think, I, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but they definitely but there is get, some, they are, uh, yeah. they definitely get a spike the mirror just neurons. by watching. The mirror neurons are yeah. strong in the, the viewer. Yeah. I feel like, man, this is long term. I'm just worried for oh, dude. slots. Long term is like when, you know, if, yeah, but, if you ever get in a spiral of it's like going down, you know, yeah. and it's like, you lose, you lose, you lose. And you're like, well, I got to be more conservative now with the money. And, yeah. and then that loses the, I don't know. I'm just but, terrible. But I will say that's also why I've been so careful about how much I raise my bets. Yeah. Yes, I've gone up and I've gone up to where like I, I, use, I sometimes get comments like, oh, you're betting too much now. And, and you know, you can't be Vegas low roller anymore. Now right. you have to be Vegas medium roller or <laughs> Vegas high roller. <laughs> uh, so I, I get those comments on occasion, but I've tried to keep my bets relatively sane. Like I could be doing Vegas map bets. Right. But like, why? Right. Like that to me feels one excessive and, and two, uh, what, what, what happens if I can't afford that anymore? Like, right. like I, I will find myself where like some channels yeah. have found themselves and I don't, so I stay like five, 10, you know, and then occasionally if I'm feeling frisky, I'll go 15 to 25. But for the most part, I've, I've tried to rein it in. So Wait, I don't. So have there been channels that didn't end up so well? Like, have there been channels that sort of, I don't oh, know, yeah, lost the all great their money. graveyard of lost slot channels. Yeah. Yeah. Is there really? We're, oh, I mean, every, I mean, maybe, maybe less than some industries, but there's clearly tons of people who didn't be, resonate right? and lost like, their butts like gambling. Well, yeah. there's, there's a ton of channels that start that think, oh, I'm going to start a slot channel. And I've seen so many and they just run out of money. Jeez. Right. Cause yeah. they don't, they don't plan ahead for like, this is how much I've got. This is how much I sure. need to spend to get X number of videos. Well, that makes sense. But what about the popular ones that were popular and that did get a lot of views and then eventually they didn't get so popular. Like overextended. I mean, they lost. Yeah. Is has there been something there, like that? There's some cases of that. Yeah. Okay. And, and, um, you know, it's hard for them to go back down and sometimes the channels, they change. Some people change how they do things right. and then the channel kind of, takes a big hit you know, even if you hear jimmy talk about the mr beast story there was years there where like he's pushing half a million uh, you know two-thirds of a million like each video and those are really close to break-even points like now he's yeah. kind of cleared that but right there were times where it, like everything every video was like this is this is the last one i got if it doesn't work yeah speaking you know? of mr beast i saw a reel the other day i don't know if it was ai generator or if it was actually mr beast but he's all like you know i had this cool idea for a a, a a YouTube channel where you just play lottery tickets Scratch and you house. use your, your YouTube income to buy more and more lottery tickets right. until you win the lottery. Yeah. Assuming people watch you enough to make enough right. money to buy those right. lottery tickets. And I'm like, well, that's exactly what slots are. Right. Like you're literally <laughs> like putting money into slots until you make more than you need. Oh yeah. They're like buying your scratch yeah. off tickets. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just a lot more exciting to watch people play slots. I imagine than scratch off cards. There but are scratch off channels. He, he did they're do small. A, Oh, they are. They're, yeah, they're he oh, did another do an niche we can video. learn about. Yeah. He did do an entire video about scratch off, uh, until he like wins. X yeah. I do of remember dollars. that. Okay. So maybe he said that before he made that video. Yeah. Maybe he did make that video. Yeah, maybe that is real then. You know, plus the, these same mechanisms, though, that I see in slot machines, they're working their way into video games. Social media and TikTok are capitalizing on a lot of it, too. So even though this study is like generic video games, I have to wonder, like, the food. dopamine spikes we're getting from mold and, I mean, junk food, too. Like, it's not like we haven't seen. Yeah. For, like, Valve, I think, I think it was Valve. It, it might have been someone else, but I think it was Valve. They got in trouble because they had these loot boxes that were a lot like gambling. You'd yes. buy You wouldn't know what you'd get I out of it. That. So yeah, they had to shut that down yeah because it was too close to gambling for like a really young audience because they weren't showing the percentages of how they distributed right. the rewards too oh um, oh that's more like yeah not having gambling to actually yeah. check yeah Jeez, yeah so it is creeping into video games for sure and it's definitely crept up in the investing world as well when you know the pandemic happened and everyone was yoloing their money into like dogecoin and all these GameStop stocks. Been there before. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And, and so many people. And what's so fascinating to me is that, like, ev a lot of people—not everybody, but a lot of people—that get interested in investing start 
at that point. They start at the gambling part, like the reckless, crazy stuff, because their perception of what good investing is is just throwing money into something taking random. big chances taking getting a big, big chance wins and getting big wins exactly yeah. and like that's everybody's perception that's with investing. a whole wall street bets subreddit exactly yeah well, it's so crazy and then after you get burned and lose a lot of money do you realize oh i see it's just money plus time equals success uh but it's interesting with with uh i suppose gambling there isn't necessarily that like perceptional shift from starting and then like no, you're just gambling you're just the, whole time, yeah, the whole time. Start to finish. To I'm get. gambling money. Like, <laughs> yeah. especially with slots. Like, you're yeah. just pushing a button and you're, right. you know, the math is doing its thing. Jeez. So for two people who have uh, achieved financial independence, would you say that there is any way to, gen- like, can generosity be financially strategic? Like, can generosity be financially strategic in the sense that you... Um, do it in a thoughtful way where it like multiplies and you're not trading your wealth for the pleasure of what you get from the generosity. I, I feel like giving away money doesn't solve anything. Like for me, I think how I get that satisfaction of like helping others is, and I know it's very selfish to say, but like, I love making my YouTube videos. And Teach I, yeah. a man to fish. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I feel like talking about the stuff that I wish I knew and understood about thinking about money and investing and doing it in a way that's free and accessible to people is, is a way that yeah, that's that, way. that helps. And I think yeah. it's infinitely more impactful to do that than like giving away mm. money to charity. But that's also important to do. Yeah, but how do you like that? It, it's cool to give people advice on how to invest and stuff once they have money to invest. Yeah. But how do you help people that are just stuck in the rat race of paying their rent every month and, and, and not being able like how do you help those people who don't have a penny to invest? Like. Right. I wish there was a, a better it? way to reach those people. Because how great would it be if we gave everybody the peace of mind of not having to worry about rent and food? Right. Just for those sure. two things. For sure. I, I the think world that, would be such a better place. Or is it just not your concern? Because it's just that's for other people to figure out, the politicians. and I feel like that's partially true. I feel like so much of that is left up to the people that can make those changes. Like we're talking about like universal basic income, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but generally, I think what's helped me or what I've seen help other people with like investing and getting them on the right path is to getting people is getting people to ask the right question early enough if that makes sense because like you said like oh it'd be great if we could help people that are in trouble but so many of those people don't necessarily feel like they're in trouble but even though they are yeah. they don't ask the right question because they don't know what the question is until it's too late or they're yeah, no choices left. They have no choices left. And, and I feel like by making, and this is just my way of contributing to it, and I'm not saying it's it's a big contribution, but by making silly videos and making fun of myself, not taking myself seriously, if you, if I'm the useful idiot that people point to and laugh and make fun of or for taking the risks or doing the stupid YouTube videos, but I've introduced you to this world of investing that you realize is an important part of your life, Yeah then I'm happy with that. If I'm just the arrow that points people in the right direction, I don't need to solve your specific mm-hmm. situation because I can't. Yeah. But if by making a stupid Dogecoin video that you're like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I doing with my money? I'm an yeah. idiot too. You know, like that's how I think, if, if that's my role, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. How much credence do you give it if you buy like, um, say like a few shares of Southwest that they're gonna take that money and then invest in more? flights and hire more people and and like you're helping the world best by putting your money and capital into the places where people build like is warren buffett like saving a lot of people from poverty because he's putting money in companies that hire people oh that's that's a good point i feel like the the, what i can do with it i do that's which is investing in the stock market i I think it's like reallocating that capital to yeah well i think it was grammar somebody a, a long time ago i watched a video and they were like oh how does investing contribute to anything it's like taking away from the world and it's you know but i think the point that he made or i I can't i can't remember who it was but they said that by investing into the market you're you're putting that money into businesses that allows them to grow which businesses what they do is they obviously provide services for people and that that's how they solve problems and you're helping hopefully fund the solution of those problems which is kind of an interesting way to think about that being investor is mm-hmm. also in and of itself a way of being philanthropic right. if you had a lot if you had a lot of money in a company that decided to prioritize stock buybacks instead of expansion or taking care of their employees would that 
be a signal that you'd be willing to like pull your money out of no, that? Or no, would you say that's I've, just good for no, business? No, I, it's I good think business. those are all virtue signals that people like to do. And they like to, I've seen so many people on the internet be like, I can't believe you invest in like Philip Morris and the cigarette company or the, uh, like this stock. There's only one stock that I sold out of moral like ethics. And mm-hmm. that was, I think it was GPS. It was, I forget the ticker symbol, but it was, it was essentially a prison uh, company. Oh, which it's like, I, I just, I, I don't like that. It's privatized prison. Privatizing. Yeah. And there's definitely companies I don't put money into. Yeah. That's the one that I've sold out of. But the reason that I try not to explore that ethical part of it all is because the moment you draw the line in the sand, I, I I can redraw it for you a million different ways. Sure. And be like you living in the first world in the U S being as privileged as you are, does far more damage than you think by criticizing my Apple position or something like, it's like, you have no idea the products you buy every day, the, the cars you drive, the, the things you support financially that you have no idea have those kinds of like effects on people. So it's like the moment you draw it, you're, you've lost the game. Like, yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it like, does. It does. But like going back to, to, to an earlier point about like being not well off and then how to, what to do with your money. I feel like, I feel like there's, you know, somebody who's just working for a fast food job. Right. Like you're, or whatever. Like I, I know when I was poor, like I wasn't great with money. I'm still not great with money. Like we talked about, but I think the less you have, the worse you are with money. Mm. Like you get a thousand bucks and your your first thought is not oh I should put this into the S and P. Right. Your first thought is you know I've been wanting new tires. Right. I'm, I can finally afford the new tires I've been wanting. You right. know, and I've been wanting the new TV, so I can finally afford that. Right. So I, I think your your world perspective is so different when you have very little money. That's true. And, and like I said, I would love to get people well, out of poverty. And, and, and that and that's a great question. That's a great point you brought up because in that example that person doesn't necessarily know that they're in a situation right that's bad i mean obviously they know they feel how hard it is to to live their life but i'm saying if they knew the right question or if they knew there was an alternative maybe they would take that route if they considered it but if they're not aware of it at all then buying a new set of tires becomes the only choice that's reasonable and so i think we all have different strengths and different ways to contribute to that awareness hmm. whether you're warren buffett and you're a crazy philanthropist and you're donating billions of dollars to doing that or you're a insignificant youtuber making stupid videos on youtube you know showing people that perhaps there is a path that's different it, it also in some small way contributes to it yeah and i don't know we all i feel like have a different approach to it uh based on yeah. our strength so i mean there's nothing, i don't know the right there's answer. clearly nothing better than capitalism that's ever been like yeah uh like working at a, a large scale but it's still maddening that so many people will die tonight of starvation when clearly there's enough food in the world and well now we're, we're technology kind of, that like that's a rounding error for the top one percent and it's right. just i don't know why we can't allocate that into something useful but it just well, is yeah impossible. well we're, we're right now we're in late stage capitalism where we're right. like almost runaway capitalism right? right so like what happens now right like i i, I saw a stat what's the that other term day again? what's what's late i've heard that before but i don't know it. late what? stage capitalism yeah it's what we're in now where so much money is just getting siphoned oh, like it only top. works at the beginning yeah, and it, then it only, like people it's only gonna go up and up and up and then like it just means the rich getting richer the poor getting oh poor. and like that's what's happening right and like here's an just a mind-blowing stat i i saw the other day if if you made if you made two thousand dollars an hour mm-hmm. from the day jesus like from zero bc right <laughs> still wouldn't reach yeah. until today yeah. literally two thousand dollars every hour from zero to today there would still be 40 people richer than you in america right like uh, like how is that right even like a real sense. right yeah do you know what i mean For sure two thousand dollars an hour since zero right until yeah. 2024 and there would still be 40 people richer than you in america right no it's it's a great question i i, I don't know the right answer is but it, it makes me that's crazy i yeah. mean do we really need billionaires if we, we were it, it's it's one of those things where I, I always try to think outside myself and i feel like it's always easy to be like ha ah, that guy right billionaire how could that be but i'm sure we can make some look at some really interesting statistics even about our net worth yes and how ridiculous it is to be in this position yes and so anytime people sort of draw again this line in the sand that like makes sense to them i always think of that joke about communism which is like uh the joke goes like this it's like hey uh like let's say you and i are in the soviet union and i'm really rich and you're like hey andre 
you had, you know, actually we're both the same wealth. We're, okay. we're, we're totally the same. They're like Andre, if you had two houses, would you, would you give me one? He's like, of course I'd give you one. Like, I, of course. And you're like, okay, well, if you had two cars, would you give me one? Like, I, I'd, get, I'd love to give you one. And you're like, if you had two chickens, would you give me one? And I'm like, no, like, I wouldn't. I'm like, why, why wouldn't you? Because I have two chickens. <laughs> the joke is that wealth distribution ends where your wealth begins. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, like your that two little chickens. Sense. It's because I have two chickens. Oh. I don't want to give you my extra chicken because I do have one. I don't have an extra house to give you. It's a hypothetical. Oh, so 2010 and so, Andre would have been much more generous. In the so way he old was Andre would have thought new Andre should be more generous. Money, you don't but want new to Andre thinks future Andre should be more generous. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying Third with that finish. isn't to point out the difference in how I've grown or anything or have evolved. I'm just saying yeah. that any I, I have a very hard time in life generally being very like specific about like this is how it should be. I, I'm always like conflicted with myself. Like I don't know the right answer. Yes. Because anytime I try to draw a line in the sand, it is always upsetting somebody and I understand that it's easier. There's always another variable. There's consider. always another variable but I'm just saying that even if you were to draw this line in the sand with the middle class or wherever it is, it's like everyone's for being charitable with money that isn't this theirs. Isn't theirs. Yeah. But the moment that you're like, hey, we're giving your money to these other poor people that you're live like, no, in another it. country hmm. because they don't have clean drinking water right. and you are worried about having like an extra car. How dare you, you ungrateful. What if it wasn't you know? like an individual yeah. perspective? It, like what if uh, every millionaire in the world was like, willing to give some portion of their wealth away would you join that pack if it was kind of like all or nothing i don't know all or nothing uh oh, I guess mean, everybody basically like everybody like nobody. everybody either does it or they, like if all the millionaires were like look if you guys all sign yeah. this document we'll all do it together i, I think it's a look look at the specifics but that that sounds like i know that there is Cause a, then it wouldn't be like you're taking it from me but all these other people don't have to there pay is already it. it's more that. like you're joining that there is already that with the billionaires there's like the the pact with like giving away most of their wealth for the billionaires there isn't i don't think there is such a thing for the millionaires yeah it's more just a hypothetical but yeah for, yeah but that but that thinking would maybe change the way i you'd think so maybe but donate. i'm just such a skeptical person when i hear that i'm like okay who's really benefiting like why are yeah. they doing this like what's who's i don't know yes if, if you could like you know wave a magic wand and and uh help people that are in need i think it's an important thing so i mean i think your communism uh, joke w is a really good point because i often am, am when i'm like because I, I spend a couple hours every night kind of in silence and, and just yeah. it, not quite meditating, but somewhere in between of just thinking. And, and, um, and I often am very critical of myself. I'm like, yeah, you think all these gr great things should be happening for people and stuff, but what are you doing? Right. Like, what are you what are you sacrificing for this? Right. And that that lead that's your point of like it's easy to be generous with somebody else's money. Right. Much harder for you to be like, well, I'm going to eat one less plate of food today and give it to people. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. And, and I, and I'm, and I struggle with that because I'm like, I should be more generous. I should be out there giving away half of what I make or whatever. Right. right? right. Like, but then you, you, there's the human inside you. It's like, yeah, but nobody else is doing it. So you're just going to, yeah, like, right. right, yeah. you know, yes, it's such a weird, well, it, we always, I, I feel like in society, aim, comments. aim the gun at the people who we think, feel are living a lifestyle that's so like ridiculously opulent and it's just like and and the default is the billionaires you know but then like like but i said like, people look at us and they're like look at these schmucks right, talking about right how to invest money when right. i'm like struggling exactly yeah yeah and then the person and then it's crazy and here's something else that i've never talked about the people in india in their call centers who are calling old retirees and scamming them out yeah. of money <laughs> being like of course this is okay they're rich Americans that have like plundered and pilfered the entire world They've justified for it to themselves. centuries yeah. and for them it's okay because it's like I don't care look at my life and look at yours yeah. and to us we're like oh poor retirees and yeah of course like how messed up is it they're taking advantage but from a macro context when you're looking at centuries of like what's happened you're like yeah. that kind of makes sense yeah why the things are the way they are That's and cool. I don't know how to solve them I don't either it's like getting robbed and being like, yeah, you should rob me. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't deserve all this. Like, right. take it, you know, I don't, like, I you're don't right. Know. I, like, you know what my ancestors got? Yeah. yeah. Like I owe that to you. So it's like, at some point, I guess somebody has to draw the line and be like, all right guys, this is what we got to do. Yeah. But, like, yeah. and I feel like I wish we had a consensus on what right. that line is and right. what that looks like. Right. 
Because, like, I well, feel I like we do. should all be contributing. I mean, like, if you just, like, for me, it's a ratio. It's kind of a ratio thing. Like, when I see the difference between, like, the average person at a company versus the CEO, and that becomes, like, 200, 500, 800 percent, 1500 percent. Like, it's kind okay, of bonkers. like, I'm kind of like, uh, I guess I could see that. Maybe you're, like, 20 times more valuable or 50 times or 100. But when it starts becoming, like, thousands or, like, when you take Elon compared to the average Tesla employee and stuff, you're just in such a different realm i have to wonder if that's still capitalism in the terms of like motivating people to build something or not but so then, but then i think to myself i'm like but what if elon is contributing crazy amazing progress to for humanity let's say like what if he puts us on mars what if we start to expand like shouldn't we reward that person or at least keep the idea alive that if you become that person you will be rewarded exponentially yeah. more well, you, I, for I, sure, but I don't I just, know the right I would just argue I that know. the I would just argue that the capital isn't being allocated correctly anymore towards getting us to Mars like right like Elon's sure wants that goal but at that wealth you could actually just invest it in hundreds of companies that could compete with each other and come up with a rocket better and like get us there faster I, I don't know so I'm just trying to figure out how to put money in a place where it does the most good and it seems like right. at a certain point it just stops being the best part of of what capitalism is but uh, it's, I mean, but it's pretty said, high. It, it takes a while to get there. It's not the average. Right. Well, you said earlier that, that just giving people money doesn't really help, doesn't really solve any problems. It helps in the short term, for sure. But, like, you, so you don't think UBI would kind of... I think UBI would help. Yeah, okay. yeah he's a sure. UBI proponent. Okay. For sure. I think it would help. But I think what will really ultimately help is just technology will come to a point where the stuff we worry about, like money, would just become less of a... Do mm-hmm. you really thing. think that's going to happen? So. Yeah. I Not within my lifetime. Okay. Yeah, but in, at a point where it's like we have the basic needs met, we figured out farming to the point where we can just provide unlimited food for everyone in the world. We've got the clean water part. We've got the housing part. We could 3D print anything for whatever, $2. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. Money just – and at some point we'll come to that if – Aren't we kind of already there? Like we throw away so much food in this country. Like sure. Excessively that could feed – all of Africa, it could feed anywhere where there's like, right. like we're kind of already there. And like the only thing I see is people being greedier and greedier. Right. I right. don't know. If, are we there? I mean, At, technologically, you mean, or I mean, everything wise, like we have more than enough money in the world. Like if we have, if we have people approaching becoming trillionaires, right. we have more than enough money in the world sure. to help these people. And we, and we have enough food in the world to help these people. Right. But we're not. And that's true. That's true. We're not. I think you are, you're right. We're, we are capable of it. Yes. But it's like then somebody has to draw the line and be like, mm-hmm. okay, who is going to be that group or whatever it is? And right. Well, I guess what I, what I was trying to say is, is I think that that, need, that, that line is just going to move. Like, so the, more, the easier technology gets, the better we get. We're just, people are just going to try and siphon more power and money than, than ever before. Like, I don't think it's going to ever reach a point where it's like, oh, we're billionaires, but it's cool now. Let's just give everybody yeah. food and, and a home. Well, even weirder, sometimes, like, you know, you said the greatest part about being wealthy is the freedom that you get. That's the other problem is it's not just like these people are starving and that's the only frame. If they had money, they have freedom. They could create, they could yes. contribute. And one of the weird reverse ways to look at UBI isn't that, like, you get free money so you can buy what you want. It's also that you get a dollar to vote with and you can, like, move the economy towards what the average person really needs that doesn't have it right now. So it's just a better voting mechanism on where capitalism should be. Yeah, like if you're working eight hours and you've got a kid at home you need to take care of, like when do you have time to like think of new ideas and new new projects and stuff? You don't. It's right. literally impossible for right. you. Like it's there's like no way to slavery. get that person out of where they are without giving them lit money as help, like True. paying their bills. True. Like, I don't see another way out of it. No, that's why I think UBI is a, is a good idea, generally. Yeah. yeah. But I think as technology democratizes, that'll become easier and easier, even if that means yeah, that's true. the technological, just the ability to be educated about this stuff and to whatever it is, just protest or I don't know what it is. I don't know what will be that tipping point. I couldn't tell you. You're a techn- are you a techno-optimist like Andre? Am I a techno optimist? No, that it will I'm, I'm the opposite. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm more pessimistic about it. Yeah, I don't like think it can be used to control like Facebook can use their social network to control more so than that technology can empower people to upload yeah. content that makes the world better. 
Yeah, I think I think we're we're we we get we're getting to a really weird place with tech where we're we used to think like tech was going to take over like the the hard labor and the horrible jobs and we'd just be creative and awesome but tech is taking over creative jobs now right right like like and the only thing left for us is more and more is becoming labor intensive kind of things that only we could do whereas uh, ai and stuff is doing all the art it's doing all the writing it's doing all the right creative work i think it's the it's it's one of the phases that we're going through but i think eventually ai hopefully will have this like point of singularity yes where it'll essentially um unlock hopefully some of the secrets like they did in biology right where they mapped up to what is it the uh what? the proteins the, the proteins right? all the proteins oh yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah it would take yeah. like the 20 years for yeah. us to do one protein yes. and ai and did, they all just of did all of sure. it right. yeah. so i i guess and it seems the way that it's going is like one of these years i don't know when it'll happen to where everything will be unlocked instantaneously it's just like all you need is to create that one invention it will happen that all creates once, yeah. all inventions yeah and once we get to that point are you talking about agi ai yeah agi artificial general intelligence sure. or what you're intelligence yeah. sure yeah yeah but at that point we're irrelevant I don't think so like For the moment sure you're irrelevant the Imagine moment we, being able no, to spin I, I don't up mean a, irrelevant a human brain at, at will on a server like why would i need a actual human that needs food water and yeah i just mean from the context of like it just unlocks some of the secrets and some yeah, of the it will. scientific experiments and it'll be a i i'm positive like what we're gonna live through it will be just astounding it won't look anything like the last right. 100 years it'll look so out there like curing I, curing aging and like yeah and connecting your brain to the i think all i'm saying all is that, that at is that point money just becomes less relevant so the resource that is the, the voting power that is the dollar or currency just becomes less important. Oh, I so see. So at that point, it's it's not about like who sacrifices. Oh, like we won't even wealth. need a. You're saying like we don't even need a fungible unit of account because right. we have so much technology exactly. at such a cheap yes. price. Yes. But then how will that? Oh, that's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah I can't even think outside a capitalistic society. Yeah, so it could like, be though. It's like how Star would Trek. that even you're work? Star, right? Like Star Trek fan. because then how will? So you're saying AGI will take over all production, all. Because like what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get wrap my head around yeah. is if we get to that point and we're, let's say in theory, there's no money or whatever, right. like what's the incentive for somebody to create a new business or come up with a new idea and execute on it right. when they can't sell it? They can, so that's what I'm saying when so, I, I can't so, think so, about outside. So that, that level of question is the same questions we face or, as people who, for whom, for the most part, money is not necessarily like a resource we have to fight for, right? So like what motivates you now? Like you have all the money in the world to not have to work again. So why do you do what you do? Couldn't you just like, why, why do you do anything? Like you, you have a motivation yourself, right? So now the world transitions to its mm -hmm. secondary problem, which is not a problem of scarcity and resources, but more of a problem of philosophy and life and love and finding all yeah. of that stuff that rich people already face, obviously, but like, does that make sense? But sadly, yeah. yeah, but sadly, self-deletion is becoming more popular. Do you know what I mean? Like Self-deletion? You, oh, you know, that you can't say the S word on YouTube. Oh, oh I see. Oh. But it's like, but that is happening. Like, people are like, wow, I have a lot. And like, now I feel super depressed. And Right. Well, all I'm saying is that at that point, the, the question that plagues all wealthy people plagues the entire world, right? Yeah. Like, why are we here? What, yeah. what, what do we do next as a, as a, that could be one as a civilization? That could be one byproduct of UBI, too, if you go yeah. there. And maybe that question is more uh <laughs> hopefully we're all just precarious or, or dangerous than the first i don't know i guess we'll all just I travel right like travel could be. eat right? together could be a much more dangerous kind of i don't know yeah. I, it seems right now it's better to have the secondary problem well i so like too not to get to too off track yourself. but i honestly think like, like we don't have much longer as it, like a species and stuff you don't think with, we have much eight, longer no i think we're we're going to hit exponential growth in a pit in a way people don't really understand okay and i think agi and all that is just going to kind of be the end of us okay like uh, i in in what sense like when you envision the end of the world is that like terminator movie walk me through like the like a movie scenario which movie is it like the most so i think it's going to be uh, like there's a couple of different facets to it one i think we're going to be irrelevant to agi right like the same way you and I don't really care about what an ant is thinking. Right. That's the way it's going to see us. Right. And the, on the other yeah, side of that, that is argument. as we get to AGI, before we even get there, I think we're going to hit like a tipping point, like a Fermi paradox moment where like 
AI is going to help not just the good things like he was talking about, like curing cancer and doing all this, but it's going to help the bad actors to make the perfect biological weapon and the right. perfect this. And I think that'll be kind of. Yeah, I think those are risks. Yeah. I, I think to say inevitably that's where we're going is, I mean, it's it's an outcome for sure. But uh, I think it's the inevitable outcome. You think it's the inevitable you just, you can't, outcome. You can't stop bad actors right and ai is going to be accessible to everybody i mean you might you might be right that it, that might be a yeah, yeah i mean if is, you gave every single person in the world their own nuclear weapon and said like one outcome is that one of them blows up yeah. like right. it's kind of like probabilistically going to happen yes. yeah so it's up to the people that are that are leading the ai field to make sure they put you know safeguards in place to, pandora's out of the box man. it probably yeah. is yeah. um not yet maybe but it probably will be at some point and at that point i, I don't know you don't think it's out it, i think it is is. No, I think, I don't think we've crossed the threshold yet to the point where it's like, it's too late, guys. I don't think we're there yet. Maybe within our lifetime, though, um, which is crazy. I, I, I had this like, well, I remember Elon Musk actually talking about this. He said, like, the odds of us being in base reality right now, mathematically, yeah. it's almost yeah, zero, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is fascinating because simulations on if simulations. we are in a simulation, the question is, why would you simulate anything in the world, right? It's because you want to find out the solution to a problem. Yes. You're simulating something. You're like what's the outcome if I create a trillion worlds and I gave it this parameter, what are the outcomes? And maybe we are the result of a simulation that's trying to figure something out, which means technically we would be right now living through the most dangerous times in history. I think we are. Because that's what you're trying to simulate. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out how long can they survive or where is it going to go? But it's also a simulation and, of an entire universe. So you might not even be a part of the story. And like, and, like and, us blowing ourselves up might just be like step one on out sure, of the, out exactly. of the real program. And maybe, uh, maybe what we're trying to figure out is how to do AI right. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like once we do cross the threshold, oh, like, like they're dealing with their own AI problems. Yes. So they're like, they simulated yes. us to see, like watch exactly. us destroy ourselves and be like, don't do it. How that do way. you roll out AI in a way That's that doesn't self destruct us? Yeah. Let's simulate. Funny. And like, like, so the, dude, we're the make remaining people in base reality <laughs> yes. are like, how do we avoid this? And yes. like, now we're and here. All of going these sub simulated yeah. you know, you know realities are running out of ideas. We're like, we got to simulate our own. No, how and you far know, can you we know go? what's super crazy about Andre's idea? I've never even thought about it before, but right when we get the technology to do massive simulations with AI will probably be exactly the point where we're scared of blowing ourselves up. So we do as many simulations as possible with as many realistic yes. humans as possible, yes. which is exactly when all those other simulated universes yes. would be dealing with the same existential it's question like a as Russian us. nesting doll within yeah, it itself. Turtles yeah. all the way down. Yeah. yeah. But like into infinity. But you're right. That would all happen. So, the, so actually we should worry about the base reality that created <laughs> us because like hopefully they get that right. We, can't even, we don't even understand that base reality. <laughs> but even if we figure out That's like interesting. Uh, if, if tomorrow we were able to somehow we like tested the universe. We're like, hey, you know how the universe is expanding? We figured out that we are actually indeed a simulation. Like would that change anything for you guys? It wouldn't. I don't think... I think it would change the world. Right. I think a lot of people would freak out. Sure. And it would be like chaos in the streets. Right. For me, like I, I already spend every day going, why am I here? What am I? Right. Like literally every day. Right. Like what am I? What is God? What is like, you know, <laughs> right. I, these are thoughts that go through my head almost on a daily basis. Sure. So I don't think it would change much for me. I'd still be going, okay, so why are we simulated? <laughs> right. Like what is our purpose as a simulation <laughs> right. rather than what is our purpose, period. Right. So I don't think it would change, but the world would be chaos. Sure, I like agree. Like chaos. What would you do? Well, the, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't feel like it would change me either, but it would change. What we do need is the conversation on a broader scale to change. So hopefully it would actually just be re, like normally I need people on TV talking like, OK, we, we know we're in a simulation like and we got a good chance of dying from AI. Can we like actually try to solve this? I guess a better question is what does that even mean if we find out we're in a simulation? Yeah, I don't right? know. Like, I mean, still going to go to bed. You each and night I and Dylan are still sitting here. Right. Right. We're still having the experience of three dudes sitting here. Yes. Like what? Nothing changes. Nothing would change for me. Yeah. Because I've had moments where I'm like, nothing exists, but still I need some Panda Express. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and then like, I eat that and I'm like, what? Nothing matters. But like, still, <laughs> I feel like I should go watch a movie. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, when I have these thoughts, I, I, I have these dumb little hippie moments where I'm like, well, the answer is that life is precious and you should just enjoy the experience right. Right, while you're here. Like whatever this is, your job is to just find happiness and live a good life and, and, and have fun. Right. Do you think we're privileged to be in this position to even have that conversation where that's our problem? 
Probably endless For torture. Sure. Why don't you give up 90% of your income to help those get to your point? I, 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 <laughs> I, I would I would love to if, if if there was a way to do it fairly and to where we could all just be comfortable I would love to do that yeah because it's not the individual I, to like set like I hate that argument they're just like why if you care about the environment why do you fly a jet and stuff like it's not on the individual <laughs> to like sacrifice everything I, that I, they have but, but there I, is but it some responsibility is. we have as a whole yes I think to it's solve up it to the individual to help one person at a time in in the way that you can it kind of is right because like I'm writing a book of kind of just a, a book I'm working on right now. And one of the, the defining points of the book is the only person you need to change to change the world is yourself. Yes. Right. Because what if every single person on their own mm -hmm. decided I'm going to be a good person from yes. now on? I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to steal. If all the only person You're you imagine. changed was yourself and everybody did that, the world would be a different place tomorrow. I agree. So it starts with, with you and independent decisions that you make every day, whether they be big or small in, in any way that you can contribute. And I think that's the best anyone can do. I don't think no single individual can ever solve the crisis of the world. It's like, how do you think we do? Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Right. Just do what I can day by day. To do you think most people wake up trying to be a good person every day? Most. I think generally people try to be the best person they can be. Yeah. So then why do you yeah. think we're in the mess we're in? If um, most people want to be good people and are trying, then why are why are we not? Because the in a world place? was formed uh, chronologically. It didn't just like w it didn't plop down here. Uh, like I said, the example with India and all the call centers. It's like that stems from centuries of you yeah, know colonialism system. and all these systems that were in place that by nature can never be equal again because they've experienced so much inequality. So how do you now correct for what's already been done? Yeah, I think I mean, that's these why are you, systemic you can problems. try to be good now, but that doesn't solve all the things that happened in the past. No, so it's like, we have to ask yourself, how does any big systemic change happen? Like, how do you end up with like a new form of government, a new way of sharing some resources, a new agreement? Like I th those I, things so can happen with influence with both of you have like influence over a lot of people. Like you could talk about that and share that and get people on board with something I, that could yeah, I, I, start snowballing. I think there's lots of ideas, but like I think every every generation, every every year that passes, it gets just a tiny bit better. Hmm. And, you know, like you could say, like the blockchain, like the, hopefully that revolutionizes the way we vote and, you know, how we see and how we get access to information and what's transparent and who's actually good and who's bad. How do they vote with their money? And I think things like that are just hmm. marginally going to improve the experience. And if you look at history too, the scary part is big systemic changes usually happen after you burn, it, burn it to the ground. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Like, like systemic I mean, changes only yeah, happen like, with violence. We can be really yeah. proud of what we did in 1776 in America, but it's because we like, we had to burn it down and like yeah. find a new place. Right. And like, yeah, we almost need to say, okay, like this late stage capitalism is sure. at the end. And like, now it's time for this new UBI AI. And, guided and, and it's interesting. And I, and thing I, or something. and I see this, this different approach from, you know, different countries like the U S is sort of, trying to set the example of like, guys, we got to set the, you know, we got to lead by example. We got to do the right thing. That's your America voice guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's uncle yeah. Sam. That's uh, uncle Sam. But guys, yeah, come but, on. but what's interesting is that like countries like India, again, like when we're talking about burning fossil fuels and like not being yeah, clean and it's like, like, we're going to burn bro. Fossil fuels. That's how you got to power is like you used all this dirty energy and now you're telling the rest of the world not to, right. like, this is what we got to access to. What? But so we still have to tell them not to, right? Like, it's, why, even though so, it's unfair, so, but like, well, we what if, to... I mean, and, and I don't even know if this is a what if question, this might just be reality. Like capitalism requires exploitation. It does, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause like somebody has to be making less to do the work for you to make more selling that work or whatever. Right. right. So like, what if the entire system we've built literally requires exploitation? Sure. Yeah. That's probably, but can we transfer that onto the machines? And at least the humans can be happy because the AI and the robots can walk around the house and clean and drive cars. And yeah, I mean, essentially that's it. Like we moved all this stuff over to China because it was really cheap, but now you can actually bring manufacturing back to the United States because robots can do it even cheaper than poor Chinese people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, but then until the robots can be greedy yeah, until the robots are like, Hey, I don't want to be treated this way. And then it's like, Oh, so you that's know, why you need the three laws of I, robotics. I have this like crazy theory that that 
the Bitcoin and blockchain will play a huge role in all of these shifts. I think so. And the reason why I think this is because if you believe that all fiat currencies eventually go to zero, which if you look at the history of the dollar over centuries, it, you could see it's just going to zero with inflation. And if that's true, and Bitcoin is in the ecosystem, the dollar is attached to it, that we're using dollars to buy Bitcoin, then that can only mean that Bitcoin would go to infinity if the closer All the dollar approaches zero. All currency goes zero. Huh. That's and a I pulled out of Bitcoin. So what you're saying is... That's a mathematical inevitability. That, yeah. that is a mathematical inevitability. So at that point, I'm just curious, like if money, I don't know, becomes this concept where it's like it doesn't make sense to calculate anymore. Like, does the world change? I don't know. Yeah. The, only, the guess, only weird thing is all the currencies, even uh, in Germany, that like went to zero or in Venezuela, it didn't feel like they were all connected in digital in the same like digital way that the world is now like there could be disconnections between the west and the east or something but it kind of seems hard for the to, for me to imagine All the I'm dollar really like disappearing because it just gets so tied to derivatives that are already fake yeah but i think the coin, romans is, thought their their money wouldn't disappear either at the time right yeah but i don't know if it was connected in a financial system with the rest of the world the way our money is now oh sure is collapse like, now is going to be catastrophic compared to back then yeah or like i just don't know how the dollar would collapse without all money collapsing all money like collapse. it just feels like it's all yes. tight like it all might fa fall apart right that that will have to be what happens i think no, what? you think you think just you the dollar so? goes to zero, but the yen is just stays kind of somehow no, in its I'm, own. I'm just ecosystem trying to be. I, I, I think it's more useful to to stay positive and and like think of a good outcome mm. rather than just like assume everything's gonna you know systemic. Yeah. You're, you're, right about, you're right about blockchain. There's some there's some amazing connections between blockchain and like recorded history that will play a huge role in identification with AI in the All future I'm saying and, is look at the power law value. video that I made about Bitcoin. <laughs> I think it explains a lot. <laughs> Have you seen that video, Dan? No. Oh, it's going to blow your mind. Really? Yeah. I'm going to watch it tonight. Yeah. The, How did the, it do? I was almost in it. It was good. It was, good. It was, it was Oh, just, that's the one? <laughs> okay. I remember it that It was one. just the relationship of, of, of Bitcoin to something called the power laws of nature. Which is? Um, it's just this, this, a power law is essentially a relationship of two unlike things to an exponential power. So if you were to like find the relationship between two unlike things and graph them, they make a straight line essentially. Yeah. So for example, like they found a power law in uh, animal size metabolism. versus metabolism or size versus brain or how planets uh, circle around the sun and how long it takes. And based on parameters, if you were to plot each one, they create a perfectly straight line, hmm. which should not exist that they should like when you think about nature or the universe you think of it as being random and not having any patterns or like specific you know things to it but they've plotted out these power laws in so many things that you'd think like make no sense at all mm. like and how does that apply to bitcoin and how it applies to bitcoin is is bitcoin's price has been growing in this power law dynamic when you plot it on an exponent exponential on the y-axis time and oh sorry x is time and y is price uh when you plot it out and it's again it's on a log log scale which means to the power of 10 mm -hmm. and then to the power of 10 and then when they plotted it out it's like this perfectly straight line for the last 15 years and if it continues to follow it it just goes to like crazy astronomical prices which is basically a way of saying it's not trying to predict bitcoin's price it's just <laughs> saying kind of is no. no, it is. That's how it's used as a tool. But what it's really saying is that Bitcoin belongs to this complex system that's not just like some random thing. Uh, and that these systems that, that exhibit these power law dynamics are like complex networks. And it, I mean, it's crazy. I can't even explain it to you here, but I'm going to have to watch, watch that video. video. I'm it's going it's to. fascinating. Like it blew my mind. City, like cities it. and biological systems have a lot of it too. But like when a city doubles in size, you only need like 0.8, the amount of gas stations. Cause you just have things moving upwards instead of vertical and huh. just not as many cars are needed. So there's just these patterns that like emerge in interesting in the world. And yeah, whether the Bitcoin one holds in the long run or I'm gonna have to watch that. I think, I think the blockchain, is going to be really useful for things like smart contracts. I mean, I wish, I think, I don't know why we're not using it more for that. Mm -hmm. Like, cause that's kind of like a foolproof way to make a deal with somebody. Right. Like it's all on, on the blockchain. Yeah. It's a smart, you know, like it only act activates at whatever. Like, I don't know why we're not using that more. I think I see the future of blockchain going in that direction. Right. 
Um, well, we'll yeah, because certain, certain people who have control kind of don't love to just give that control up to a piece of software. And right. if there's bugs in the code, it can be right. risky. But are you heavy into Bitcoin, by the way? Just heavy? No, I wouldn't say I'm heavy. But can, can I ask what percentage of your say of your oh, I'd say portfolio? 10%. Ten percent. Yeah. Is that where you would recommend? For me, I think it's good. I wish I had more. I wish I had closer to like twenty yeah. percent. But for me, I, I'd like more. Okay. Because it scares me. I've seen it tumble so many times. Yeah. I mean, I've been yeah, in it. It's a different asset class if you already own a house and you feel like you have stocks. Yeah. And you already have maybe I think it's more risky silver, not metals. to own one than to own one. Okay. Yeah. I wish I bought it when it was down to 17 a year or two ago, whenever sure. that was. Um, yeah. But well, we'll see. I don't, I don't like making like price predictions. It's Sure. And I don't like sounding like a salesman. Like, I don't care if anyone buys Bitcoin. It's, no, no, of course It's not. one of those things, like in my videos, I'm making big. Bitcoin videos, I generally don't like making those videos because people are like, yeah. ooh, trying to shill. I'm you like, I, get, I do yeah, not care what you buy. I don't care. If you buy this stock or Bitcoin, it makes no difference in my life. These assets that I talk about are trillion dollar markets. I could have 50 YouTube channels like mine that would make zero like outcome on, on these prices. They're too big. But what do you think about the Ponzi X aspect to Bitcoin? Like it only Ponzi grows X. because other people put money into it. Okay. Isn't that, that which is a Ponzi isn't scheme. that true for anything that grows in value no because like like other things have like gold is is gold what right do you mean gold is gold like the like you can buy gold but you're buying a tangible thing with with bitcoin it's the only way it gains value is if other people think it has value correct which is how a ponzi you're scheme talking, works no you're talking about intrinsic value right yes the argument against intrinsic value with bitcoin is that the the only reason that anything has intrinsic value is because there's there's a a, a being like human beings are yeah. giving it value. Like for example, people argue gold has intrinsic value or water has intrinsic value because we need it. Yes. But if humans did not exist, there is no value or intrinsic value to water. Yes. Or gold. There yes. is no sentient being that exists in the universe beyond what we are just to like give it value. So when people argue about like intrinsicness, it, it, it says nothing because what gold has in terms of intrinsic value, in terms of its use in production, right. which by the way, there's are better you, metals. Are than you that. even arguing for intrinsic value? Is that well, I, I'm point? saying, I'm saying that's all true. Like right. we, but those things, we are beings that exist and we, but those are things that have use cases. Correct. Bitcoin has no use oh, case. It does. Right. Yeah, sorry, no, are, it does. It totally does. That. It might not have use cases to you, Okay. Yeah. but it does around the world. I mean, imagine international remittance and things like that. Oh, like, it's, gold, it's gold insane. Can't do I that. mean, it's, it's been argued and debated to like to death about like the intrinsic or the value or the use cases of Bitcoin, whether it's, you know, remittances or uh, just, I mean, yeah, mostly just, and the ability to just hold, store it with like in your head and not have value. to like, I, the ability to send money from A to B without the centralized banking system, the, the yeah. uh, decentralization I mean, there of, of value, it. There's, there's so many aspects of it that, you know. Okay. So you, you see that it does have value outside of just other people thinking it has value. Well, and, and something like Ethereum is also t Turing complete. So you can build a piece of software on I, it. And if you want to run computation, you need the coin too. So there's like the whole thing with Ethereum versus Bitcoin too, that gives it kind of intrinsic value. The answer to your question, no, I, I don't. I think anything that has value has value because people give it value, if that makes sense. Yeah. And Pokemon. If, and if Pokemon. millions of people around the world <laughs> believe that Bitcoin has value, then it has value. It doesn't matter whether it's intrinsic or not. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it makes sense. I, 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 I still go back to gold is used in this and that and water we drink and all these other things that have yeah. literal value for yeah. us. Well, fun, I mean, that is an aspect that here, makes them here, sa safer in one here's way. Here's a fun fact. We're able to grow gold in a lab now. We are? Since 2018, yeah. It's still it's too just expensive. You don't have more to worry. Expensive oh, it's more expensive to do it yeah. than to do gold yeah. than... But isn't that insane? Yeah. Like what happens to like gold? Like if AI optimizes gold? Like what if the cost Alchemy <laughs> of making start gold start to make sense? <laughs> what happens to what gold? What happens to gold? Yeah. That's Where wild. diamonds are already That's like insane. that, right? I didn't know we made well, gold. What does that intrinsic value argument say about that? Just because it has intrinsic value, that means what? Because they're highly ordered it Well, infinity? it's because of the finite resources of it that, that also gave it value. But then if you're making it in a lab. Which I guess what I'm trying to say is that the point I'm trying to make is that intrinsic value as an argument is lost if now 
by saying I can grow an infinite amount of it, you're like, oh, well, it's worthless now. Why is it worthless? I thought it had intrinsic value. I thought I was out of the Bitcoin game. Now you're making me want to like put Get some back money back in. in. I don't like talking about the big, like I love talking about it. I just don't like talking about it like on the internet or just these podcasts or videos because it, it just makes me sound like I'm trying to sell you something. I don't, I don't care if you yeah, buy yeah. it or not. Yeah, it's yeah, a of course. Shame. It's, it's a shame if people it. don't understand it. And I've just like, I've been, I've been in so many debates and so many like conversations over the years that I'm not as passionate about it as I used to be. Okay. I used to be like, no, you have to, you have to understand, you have to get into it. Now I'm just like, I don't care. But that's how you still feel on the inside. That's how I feel. Okay. On the okay. Inside. Yeah, but just, you don't want to talk about it cause it's yeah, divisive. It's and divisive. People think I'm a salesman mm -hmm. or something. It's like, I just don't care. Yeah, but don't it like, also gets a lot different when you start talking about like Dogecoin or something that's like a, that's like a crypto derivative and has all those same principles, but doesn't seem to be the one that everyone's working on because it can easily be scammed. That's a, that's, that's actually a great question. So like the blockchain makes sense, right? Yeah. That, but like Bitcoin itself, what if Bitcoin is MySpace, right? Or, uh, is yeah, MySpace. And then like old tech, right? Facebook comes, uh, yeah, comes around. Kind of that was, that was one of the yeah. phases I also went through as well. That okay. was like, that was in 2017. Okay. I had that same line of thinking and I was like, oh my gosh, Bit what if Bitcoin is like the MySpace and it's outdated? Yes. Something better comes along like Ethereum or IOTA or this like trinomial math, whatever. <laughs> like I got so deep into it, man. Like I would read all these white papers and I found tech that I thought was so much more superior than Bitcoin. I was like, this is clearly better. And ultimately none of them panned out. None of them panned out. Not yet. No. And but you don't see they, it coming. And they never will. Yeah, really? it really. They never yeah, will. Yeah, because no. I went through I, I know that And you think it's because exactly. people are just too entrenched in Bitcoin at this point? It's really no. just because a ton of people have be belief that Bitcoin isn't there this are, crazy fly by night thing. Like there's billionaires that are just sitting on it and people who are just willing to love it. There's a lot of things Bitcoin has going for itself that will never be replicated ever again. Like the fact that when Bitcoin Satoshi's, started, Satoshi, like no yeah. one knows who that is. No Still one will, don't know. No one will ever know who yeah, that yeah. is. Who do you and think it is? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. but, but the point is, is like no one will ever find out. And because there is no person that we can attach it to, there's no central point of attack. Mm. There's no person we can criticize and be like, oh, this person's history is, you know, look how sketchy that guy is. So that's it. Bitcoin has like this almost like immaculate, you know, birth kind of thing going for it that it's like, yeah, it's kind of untouchable, <laughs> it's in, untouchable that, in that, in that regard. Sense. It's sure. immortal. Immaculate. It's detached yes. from a person. It's like an idea with no real origin. It's to immaculate criticize. Conception. Do you think that was his yeah. goal? I pro yeah, it was a hundred percent. Yeah. He left yeah. because of that. Really? And, and no one does that anymore. Yeah. You have to, you have to like dox yourself. You have to like tell people who you are now for people to get trust into it. Otherwise, if you're anonymous, you're probably yeah. going to just like pull, you know, just yank the rug under people. Because Vitalik deals with that. I mean, he seems like a really honest, good guy. guy yeah. But since he created Ethereum and he's yeah. one of the founders and Charles Hoskinson, like they still have to kind of deal with like, this is my currency, you know? Right. Know. Right. Because everything's a cult of They're personality. Guys, and, yeah. And Bitcoin is free of that. Here's why technology in terms of like to answer really the question of a better technology not coming along is because all cryptos and Dylan, I don't know if you remember, face the, the three pronged problem what was it security scalability or de decentralization pick oh. two that's yeah. every crypto's problem okay. is that they're trying to solve security scalability and decentralization so yeah and, you, and, you and, can and, scale but then you're centralized right or so, so can... other cryptocurrencies have come along to try to be like oh look you see how bitcoin's too expensive to use as a currency well our currency you can send for free instantaneously and not have to wait 10 minutes like bitcoin's blocks are but the point is, is if that you increase you scalability, security. you s sacrifice decentralization because now the, the reason that it's fast is because it's, it's because it's running basically like someone's controlling it and telling like approving right. the transactions and why it works easily in the beginning is because when a network is small, it's, 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 um, what is it? It's, it's not scaling yet. Mm -hmm. And when it's not scaling yet, it's like the, the problem becomes more evident when there's a lot of people trying to use the network. Sure. When there's a lot of people using the network, it becomes more expensive. So how do you solve that? You have to sacrifice either security, scalability, or decentralization. And all crypto, all crypto face that, that problem. So what is Bitcoin's uh, 
suffering. It, it can't. Bitcoin, it's not easily as yeah, it used as a it currency. Seem, it's it's insanely well. secure, uh -huh. and it's insanely decentralized. Its biggest problem is scalability. Okay. It doesn't scale as a currency in the sense that there is a limit to a one megabyte block. I believe it's one megabyte, which means we can only fit one megabyte's worth of transactions into the block. Which means if you want to like compete to get your transaction time. into a block, you have to pay a higher fee. Mm. It's like think of a bus, right? A bus comes every 10 minutes. But if the bus is full with like a thousand people, how do you get on the bus? You bribe the bus driver with more money. Right. And that's why people are like, well, Bitcoin can't be used as a currency. It's true. That's really, it, that's its limit. Mm. It's not used as a currency. And it won't be if it can't be scaled. There are solutions for scaling. It's something called the Lightning Network, which is layer two, which is a whole different discussion. But that's basically like we can attach a derivative, like a paper that's like, hey, I trade Bitcoin with you on the secondary network, like on the higher network. Mm -hmm. And then once we're there. done, we settle our transaction on layer one. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. So on layer two, everything's instant. It's like no no fees nothing it's right. just we're, we're just we're trading, trading currency we're yeah. trading dollars yeah when we're ready then we go to the bank and we settle with the gold does that make sense yeah so you're just delaying the the correct. bitcoin part of it correct okay. you're delaying yeah, the actual the network stuff, and then at the end of the night go move the gold where it belongs the, the criticism to it all and is they haven't f solved it completely the criticism is well if you create layer two on top of layer one you are literally recreating the fractional reserve system you're recreating the dollar Oh, because we used to transact on layer one, which was gold, the gold standard. And then we're like, dang it. This is complicated. This is too heavy. It's too expensive. Let's use papers. Just pure paper. We printed more papers than actually there was gold. Right. And that's the criticism with maybe layer two. Now, is there but inflation? Is that impossible on layer two since it's digital? Right. So so the criticism against the criticism I just said is that inflation is impossible because everything is digital and you can see if it the, has to the, still settle. It has to still night. settle. It has to still account it has to still pencil basically hmm. we can't just like digitally create fake papers bitcoin and fake papers and exactly. then translate that to bitcoin it, it wouldn't be valid right and so hopefully that is the solution so that your the, the equivalent would be like if we were on the gold standard you couldn't print more money because correct. there wouldn't be correct right hmm. yeah so so that's yeah and then the only tricky thing that pops into my head though is that at the end of the day you still can print as many dollars or yen uh, as you want to buy Bitcoin. So it always kind of holds it from oh, yeah. going like, you know what I mean? Like it, in this world where we all agreed that was the only form of currency, it would go through the roof. It would be worth so much money to be ridiculous, but we always can invent fake things to buy it with. So it's, and you well, can also buy it. You can invent fake things to buy gold with too. So it's like, that's kind of what holds, I think well, the system. From. That's the whole theory behind like infinity and like just exponentially growing just because bad money chases the good money. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, it's just not going away. Now that Bitcoin's been securitized into an ETF, it's been accepted by every like financial institution in the world. So now what we know so far is Bitcoin is not going away. In 2004, I believe it's 2004, gold got securitized. Before 2004, gold was not a digital thing that you can invest right. in as an ETF. You had to buy it. And now Bitcoin's been securitized as an ETF. So when gold did that in 2004, within seven years, it quadrupled in value. Really? Quadrupled. I think that we'll at least see that with Bitcoin in the next seven years. At least. At least. That would be like a really bad would outcome. You, so would you, would you still invest in the ETF, the Bitcoin ETF, or would you buy there's Bitcoin advan direct? There's, there's advantages to buying the ETF, which is like, uh, you know, tax loss harvesting, all kinds of stuff like that. But it's also easier. It's easier. It's yeah. way easier to manage and stuff. The, there, there are risks to it, like third the party dollar counterparty crashes. risk. Okay. Well, if someone Robinhood crashes or something, or like the company that's managing the ETF, someone steals it or they lose it, things like that. So self custody is better. It's, it's more risky, but it's also safer in the sense that no one can take it from you. Mm. Um, so there's pros and cons to both. But I know people that have like crazy amounts of money in the ETF and who hold it independently. Cool. I hold it like through a um, ledger, through the Hardware ledger. Wallet. Yeah. Okay. Hardware wallet. But uh, ETFs are amazing. And I think- yeah, I was gonna ask if you have a paper wallet or-, or yeah. yeah, but I think Bitcoin's gonna, I mean, I, I hate talking about predictions. I just, yeah, I, I yeah. just hate yeah. them, but I think it's gonna do- You're a wealth of Bitcoin knowledge. I so just, I think to... it's gonna, like it's gonna go crazy. And you still thought that when it dropped to 17, you're yes. like, this is just Because I've been through so many of these cycles. Yeah. Where you're like, I knew it, it's a scam. It's, and, and, I, and it's so sad to see because like 
people pay attention so so much to the price of it and 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 the things that cause it to collapse in price have nothing to do with the fundamental proposition of what it actually is. You're like, so selling me on Bitcoin right dude, now. Like the yeah. technology of what it is yeah. doesn't change because FTX collapsed. Like it's still Bitcoin. It yeah. still does what it says it does. It's governed by mathematics. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is people's fear or perception of it. But it's the same thing. And uh, You're not wrong. Yeah, it's not going to change. And I, I don't know. Uh, we build I a feel slot like, machine with Bitcoin. That'd I feel great. like by the Walk end up. of this decade, we'll see a million Bitcoin. By the end of the decade. Really? Yeah, 2030, 2032. A million? A million per Bitcoin. And then probably beyond that in the next 20, 30 years. Uh, now I have a follow-up question. If yeah. you feel this strongly, yeah. why is it only 10% of your portfolio? Because I don't know what I don't know. True, fair. Yeah. And so, and so you're still hedging. I'm still but hedging why 10? More. Why not 30, I want to do more. 40. I want to do 20%. I want to do much more. Okay. How come um, you don't care? I mean, if you care about your audience, why don't you express how much you think they should because be Because I think Bitcoin? part of good investing means diversifying. Sure. And no matter how much you like a stock or like an asset, you have to diversify because you never know what can happen. There are things that could happen that we could hit, get hit by a solar flare or yep. something. Yep. And then that's screwed for like the next, who knows, 20 years. I, there are so many unforeseen things that hmm. can happen. But couldn't you say like over and over again, like don't buy it if you don't believe what I believe, but I believe with all my heart, this thing is going to the moon. And then no, I don't like saying be. that. I just don't like saying that because it just makes me an easy target for people to hmm. criticize me based on price. Yeah, right. I could see. I could see. I just don't wanna, care. Right. Right. It dropped five k this week. Yeah, You're what wrong an idiot. And like, I yeah, don't care. Andre, yeah. I just bought it. It went down. Uh, yeah, like I, I told you, there's a possibility. But yeah, I'm over it. I just don't. I don't care if people. Yeah. If you like Tesla, buy Tesla. If you like Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. If you like real estate, buy real estate. Yeah, I avoid Tesla so hard. <laughs> like I, I, I even, I even avoid ETFs that are too like that have too much Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. But deep down, do you know the stock's going to be worth a lot more in 10 years? Like, or do you feel like it's just about Elon and Tesla? Yeah. It's, more oh, I think it's, it's a morality it's, play. I, well, I don't, I don't like Elon as a person. That's half of it. And the other half of it is, I think it's way overpriced. Hmm. Like it's been positioned as a tech stock versus even a if car. they solve real world robotics and wait a minute, and Optimus hold on, hold on. robots are everywhere in that. Alexa, yes. turn on night mode. This is the, the fractals. You know fractals. Right? Yeah, You're of course. Oh, love fractals. Dude, yeah, fractals, love fractals are everywhere in Bitcoin, which is by the way one of the things that you see in power laws, in nature, fractal patterns. But the point is, is that like there have been so many repetitive like cycles in Bitcoin dating from its inception to where it's like oh it went up to five dollars ah down to one dollars it's a scam up to one hundred dollars down to twenty dollars it's a scam from a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars oh it crashed again it's a scam and it's been like that over and over, over and over again, again. and yeah. then if you ask yourself what is the defining characteristics of what a scam is and how, how does it look like and the fact that bitcoin is worth anything for so long as a technology in an industry that moves so fast that gets attacked so many times. The fact that it's worth right now fifty thousand yeah. dollars. The fact that it was even worth ten thousand or a thousand. How it's can bonkers. something? Yeah. How can something that is stupid, useless, whatever, like no intrinsic value, be worth anything at all? Like that to me is just like mind-boggling. How someone can look at its price today and be like, "Ah, it's a scam. It's a tulip bubble." It's like, what are you talking about? Well, that's about? where the Ponzi, Ponzi criticism comes, right? Sure. Like, it's only been worth more and more because more and more people have been buying into Think it. about the stock market. Stocks that don't pay dividends are a Ponzi scheme, if you want to look at it that way then. Because stocks that don't pay dividends are just the promise of a company's future earnings. And if it's not paying you dividends, you are literally speculating on the next guy to buy it for a higher price than you. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. The entire stock market then, yeah. by definition, is a Ponzi scheme. Unless it pays a dividend. Yeah, but okay. but forward earnings is a little bit different than like a card, like a Pokemon card that has just sure, the value but of it's, it's all like based on it speculation. It's these earnings are not promised. They're just a, a, a gamble. They're like, okay, I, I yeah. hope this company makes a bigger yeah. profit next quarter, but sometimes it doesn't. I mean, see, yeah. That's a fair point, man. Right? Arguably yeah. a little bit more it's stable with real money coming in and a real true, product that true. it sells. And that's but, Warren yeah. Buffett's argument is that it's, you know, Bitcoin's rat poison because it doesn't produce anything useful. You know, it's only companies that produce useful things. And I get that argument, yeah. but well, do you don't think Tesla's going to solve real world robotics though? Like, is if they come with AGI, if they oh, have, no, I, um, I'm not arguing against Tesla. Oh no, I was, I was talking more about yeah, not, yeah. not wanting to invent yeah. like, like, like Bitcoin versus 
uh, Tesla as far as like potential investments today? It seems like they both could. I think go completely uh, uh, off the charts. I think Elon is in, uh, is in control enough of Tesla and his hubris is, is would make that decision. Yeah, like I think I think there's plenty of other companies focused on mm. robotics that that could surpass them easily. He's so cute. Yeah, because it's like it's like one X and open AI or Tesla and this is just and, and Optimus. I just, I just I'm not sure who else is going to solve the what, robotics <laughs> problem. He's the best, <laughs> but there, there's no there's. Yeah, I think his ego and his hubris like is, is yeah. just going to overpower all of that. So Microsoft, you think better better AI investment? I've got a ton of money in Microsoft. I've, I, the only thing I don't have a ton of money in is NVIDIA, and I feel terrible about it Like, because it's just every year. It's like, hey, we're 400% more. Right, right. <laughs> like, Yeah, no, I'm the same. I feel the same. I'm like, oh, God, I missed it again. I missed the, mm-hmm. yeah. I, but I, I've gotten to the point in my life where I don't chase mm. things I've missed. I'm like, I've missed it, and I have to accept it. Tesla was one of those stocks, and Nvidia is yep. another. I stock. wonder what, it, like, if, if uh, Sam Altman does get the seven trillion to build stocks, I wonder if it goes like directly into the big companies right now. Like, if it just goes to Samsung and Nvidia, where and, wouldn't it? Where wouldn't it I don't go? know. Or or you or you build it from the ground up, and it's a government owned thing or no, some new company. I imagine that, invest that investments in. is gonna it's gonna like you said filter out to all these companies to help build out the infrastructure. Can you imagine he wants? if he pulls off seven trillion from multiple governments, and they're only going into five or six tech companies? Those hardware companies would go bananas in a way no one's ever seen before yeah so which companies would you say would would benefit most from that investment i don't know i mean intel's trying to like reinvent their whole thing and amd is reinventing their whole thing and there's a few other smaller ones microsoft just took Uh, over uh, apple's market cap yeah became the most valuable company in the world yeah now could you imagine if steve jobs was alive today dude yeah he'd be upset (laughs) (laughs) there would be you'd be like what they got back on top like yeah Yeah. apple microsoft nvidia i don't know who else would benefit who uh i mean i I, i'm sure there's i mean well yeah google builds their own processor with the tpu so they kind of are a hardware company like when i see people talk about this kind of stuff those are called qualitative analyses i'm like how is this any different than gambling because it's like one company could come along it's gambling right and be like like just i'm well, gonna do everything yeah. better than everyone yeah facebook will come along well, and yeah. take over my space like, yeah exactly yeah. Or, or just like hey you know what amazon is gonna get into ai and do everything now better than tesla yeah better than whatever nvidia and well just- the, the thesis i'm working on is a little bit unique in the sense that i kind of think real like real human creativity gets solved in software and hardware mm. and then you have the last invention man ever needs to make which is the invention that can make other inventions and that exactly i could be totally wrong on that but if that happens well, that's what it does feel about. like one company I don't know if it's Wins gambling. everything. Yeah, I don't exactly. know if it's like gambling. Oh, so you're saying the company that creates AGI? Yeah, yeah, and it could be it could be like a few of them at the same time or something. But it's not going to come from Coca Cola. It's not going right. to come from like any other company except this handful that you can pretty much keep your eye on because the models are just so expensive and so technically challenging. And there's a few companies in China, but there's probably less than a dozen that are actually going to build a large language model with a trillion parameters. So that if you're really smart, you can narrow it down to maybe like a couple dozen. Yeah, something like that. And in, the, or in which like, case, your odds still kind of suck. Yeah, and and the, old, and, the <laughs> and their competitors would be governments. They wouldn't even be like other companies. It's like there's a couple dozen companies or the Chinese or American government like working on this stuff. Right. Oof. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you can invest in, you gonna uh, buy Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely buying Bitcoin now, which is I thought I was out, man. Now I'll pull back. Andre in. got you in. Yeah, yeah. No, people are gonna make videos, be like, "Oh, this idiot convinced him to buy it. Now oh. it's twenty grand. Now it's down to twenty. He lost his <laughs> money." Like, no, I mean, I, you make great points, and and to be honest, if it's only like ten percent, yeah, of my portfolio, then great. Right. Like, even if it tanks, it's ten percent. Right. You can yeah. take that exactly. Hit. Um, like everything I'm in right now, I'm up like, I think 15% on the year so far on, on right. most of it. It's like, like, can we keep this going? Right. Yeah, like, money, it'd be great. Money growing money. Is what right. it's all about. I think ultimately people are, people that got lucky enough to get in on Bitcoin are not going to be selling it. They're mostly going to be borrowing against it. Mm. That's it. They're all just going to be holding it and borrowing against it. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to buy some now. But and no Ethereum, right? Just straight. Bitcoin. I I have Ethereum too. Okay. It's like twenty per thirty percent of like my crypto. Of your ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. And the, but that just those two is all you're just in. Just those two. Really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Man, I hope so. If it if it goes to zero, I'm, I'm gonna be like Andre did this. All right, I yeah. know it's gonna be my fault. <laughs> yeah, man, it's still it's withstood the test of time so far. So so far. Yeah. So wait, do you guys think agree with Tesla being overvalued or no? Uh, I have no idea, man. No, I, I don't. Think, I think it's. I know Kathy Wood saying that in a couple of years it'll be worth like five thousand. That's her like base case or four thousand, and then it's. That's wild. As high as 7,000. Yeah, it's hard for me to discount um, any of those dozen companies I was talking about. I, I'm not too sure between them which does it, but somewhere in the mix is some incredible value of the world's ever it's, seen. It's crazy. I didn't know this before, like, really getting heavy into investing, but, like, so much of a company's value is the CEO's ability to tell a story about where it's co where it's going. Really? So, like, Elon's like, you know, we're going to do robots and all this yeah, stuff. Like, And he true. could. But investors, uh, because they like to speculate, they already bake into the stock price the things he his said. His promises. His oh. promises. So they're like, oh, well, they're going to do robots. They're going to do self-driving taxis. Oh, so it might be over So valued. let's guess what that income would be off of this self-driving taxis. All those things he all promised. All the robots, all the things he promised. Wow. And then the stock goes up, and now it's reflecting not what it's doing, but what it will do at a crazy capacity with these crazy different ideas that are like way out there. So it has to be overvalued then. By that definition, I don't know. Well, he's but, promised self-driving cars, right. which are probably never coming, at least not anytime sure. soon. Well, he's promised a lot of things that are but, not but what happening. What if they do happen? What if in three, five years from now, there will be self-driving Teslas? What if there will be robots helping us cook our food? And then we're going to be like, oh, gosh, I wish I believed him. You know? For sure. And I think that I think it will be. I mean, so, I pretty much self drove the whole drive here and like version <laughs> 11 is coming. And so like, I guess my question why is, why wouldn't version 12 or 13 solve again, the problem? Again, investing, gambling. So it's like, <laughs> how much really is all of these hypotheses talking about Elon doing this or not is a gamble versus... I mean, actual I mean, I mean, also just take him out of it. Like, just ask yourself, does the Dojo supercomputer exist? Does he actually train models? Does data come in from the cars? It does. Like, it, it's it's not about Elon claiming that it's going to happen. And, and that's such a great point, how you said you don't like Elon, right? Yeah. Or it's like, that's the greatest example of why Bitcoin is a success, because it doesn't have it an doesn't Elon. It doesn't have an Elon. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and for if, sure. And if Elon, did, if Tesla didn't have Elon, you might be like, I actually for do sure. like this company. I would totally like. Right? Yeah, Which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like if Satoshi I mean, had a YouTube my, channel. Dude, we would up subscribe. until up until I got money, I, there was nothing more than I wanted than a Tesla. Mm. And, then, and then as soon as I could afford a Tesla, Elon lost his mind. <laughs> and I'm like, now I'm never buying a Tesla. Right. Like... I, and, and, and I've told Dylan this in, in private. It's like, I feel like, remember we were talking earlier about you can only change yourself. So like in a capitalist world, I feel like the only way you can make a difference is like this tiny cog in this machine right. is how you spend your money. Right. Right. So I try not to spend money with people I don't think oh, are good. Oh, do you see, when you spend money, is it meaningful to you? Like no. you say, I spend money not in a way all. that aligns no. with my morality? Never. No. But you that's get, the only way you can make a difference in this world. Maybe. You, you just I give think up that power, I that voting power, so, sort I, of? I do, yeah. Well, I do vote certainly, so sometimes with my, my money in that way. Hmm. But well, it's you a, said but you didn't invest in the prison company. Yeah, that's the one thing I didn't. Uh, so do I you try. Skip, do you I skip try. elections too? Do you like vote? Locally? These questions are coming. These are these are bad <laughs> questions, <laughs> no, Dylan. They're great <laughs> questions. But I mean, like, I'm like, trying like, to answer like, one, and he's like throwing okay, three okay, more. Okay, 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 too much. And I totally forgot which one I was talking yeah. about. But don't uh, answer the last one. Go back <laughs> to the other one. <laughs> I feel like one of the ways I've been like, you know what, I'm not going to support this, and this is a stupid example, but like. So many of the car allocations from like Porsche or like these high end luxury cars, they're like, oh, you need to buy three other ones you don't want first before we can give you this one. And I'm right? like, I'm done with that. Isn't that if such a, a dumb model? If a company is going to do that, I'm never going to support it. Right. And Audi I, doesn't do that? Oh, okay. Which one? Audi? Audi doesn't do that. Okay. No. Porsche does That's that. Really Lambda Porsche does that. That's Ferrari. not that Lambda does not do his. that. Huh? That's not different from him not wanting but it's, to support But it's self serving, though, in my case. It's self serving, I think. It's, sure. it's not helping the world doing that. Because someone doesn't have access to a Rolex, like it's not, it's very self-serving. Uh, but and then you you asked something else, I forgot. But well, just if you didn't, if you don't feel like these votes matter in terms of money, I was thinking like maybe you're the kind of person who just like throws away the the local like vote for your people. So I was gonna ask about that, but mm. you don't. I don't know. Instead of saying who did you vote for, I just wonder, do you even care about voting, or do you kind of feel like it doesn't matter? Uh, I don't think it matters in the long run. So, yeah. I think in the short term it does, but in the long run it doesn't. Um, but no, there's some truth to that. I mean, I get that. Like voting with your money, voting with your actual vote. Like sometimes it doesn't seem like it makes a difference. No, not really. But I mean, we're all cogs in a machine. But like dude, you sure. have to do systematic your part changes. As a yeah. cog. That's true. Like that is well, true. kind of. So I think sometimes the system though is meant to make you feel like you have control, but you really don't. So sometimes you have to like think about the whole system, 
and say like, how can I really make a difference? You know, like how could I actually go out there and how can you make it? I mean, because so, your vote is like, it's a, certainly a piece of the system. But if you want the government to change, like I would. So, I, well, like, like, like if there's a um, ranked choice voting, right? Like, yeah. I know that system works way better than one vote way per better. person. So, it, but it's like, there's a couple times when they've tried that on smaller scale political things. And it's like, I try to make people aware of that or yeah, they, show how couple, well that works. Cause there's like, like a couple states that have it, a couple like large cities that have it. Can you imagine if one of the major candidates was like, vote me in and I will change the voting system to rank choice and mm -hmm. we'll never vote this way again. And mm -hmm. like, there's no negative campaign. Like, there's no reason to make a negative ad campaign in a rank choice system. That would completely change how every political news organization works the way that like people spend their money because all they have to do is make you hate the other candidate so badly you vote for them right Th third party you don't do that you just become the you just be fall down the chain and someone else takes your place so you have no incentive to spend money to to hate on your competitor you'd have to say this is why you should vote for me i'll do these things and i just think it would fix so much you're so much more informed about this than i am i don't even have an opinion about it <laughs> well <laughs> Like, yeah, well, here, it, like, know. yeah, it, it's a little, maybe there's still somebody watching after this long, but like, right, right. but no, seriously, a ranked choice vote means that I don't you even know what that means. Okay. So, so instead, oh, you, like this to five people you yeah, want. So, ju so just imagine wow. um, the last election, if it was like Hillary, Trump and Bernie or something, right. And you had to say, I like this one the most, this one, the second most, this one, the third oh, most. Oh, okay. Right. So you, you don't have an incentive to just vote for your enemy. You could say, oh, I'll, I'll vote for the person I like the most. It's very likely that someone oh. like Bernie would have been so many people's second choice because that they would have said, won. They, they would have said yeah. I'll vote for Hillary because I hate Trump or they would have said, I'll vote for Trump because I hate right. Hillary. But they both, everybody like oh, wait, Bernie so is the why second don't we do choice. That? Why don't, why isn't that a thing? Well, it's not how the founders started the government and, and it's, plus, just, it's just a systematic problem. And now, the people but, in power are the ones in, cha in right. charge of changing that. Yeah. You need the two parties to agree to change. That makes so much it would sense, be such though. a big thing. It'd be to like weighted it. voting. Yeah. That's but, crazy. But it's frustrating because a very clear solution to the systemic problem is out there, but it's never going to get talked about in the same way that every day one entire news organization is going to tear the Democrats apart and another entire news like organization is going to tear the Republicans oh, apart. It's and just depressing thinking about that stuff. Yeah. I but it's like, a, yeah. like, I feel so powerless to, to influence any of that. We are. I've actually like this is another thing I've thought a lot about. Burn. I was like, yeah. and one idea I've had, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we made an app called Third Party, like literally an app called Third Party, where like you seek out candidates who like are are kind of middle of the road, not not extremist in this way or that way, that kind of and like you set like a list of guidelines of what candidates you want, and like you that is kind of the choice on the app and everybody votes according to third party mm. and that's how you like actually bring about a real third party by right. going that route oh yeah okay I'll t let me tell you guys this is how it's, <laughs> you want to you want to fix the whole system and nobody's going to love this but I think on your phone you have a tiny large language model that knows who you are and you should give up your vote and it should be able to vote on behalf of you and you should be able to vote on every not politician but every bill individually something like chat GPT reads the entire bill it knows who you are and it says you you would be in favor of this or you would not be and votes on your behalf. So yeah. you're, you're you're removing all decision. I would remove all decision. Yeah, I think that I think an AI can summarize data in a way you. you so can't. so why not take that to the next <laughs> level and have AI decide what you're going to eat for dinner, <laughs> what kind of car you're going to drive? You hey, know what I mean? Listen, like, you, where does that? I guarantee both of you do that at some point in your future because not, it's no going to be so. It's well, not the voting, but like just, the, just, the the dinner decision. I guarantee. You. I just yeah. get that quote. Of like, oh, hi, Mark. And I, the, the <laughs> so, guy who controls the I don't, AI company is like, yo, I'm going to take over. Yeah, but, but it's a really powerful thought because right no. now, why do you vote a representative in? Because they're supposed I, to act on your behalf and read the long paperwork that you're unwilling to. But yeah. Yeah. Have you ever noticed Chad GPT? I, you can dump 80 pages in I and it's very, like, here's a quick summary. I have a very rudimentary like thought experiment. What, what if it was just like a questionnaire on your on your phone? That's like, how do you think about this? Do you like this or that? Do you like this or that? Do you like this or this? Yes. It's just like issues that you care about. And then based on that, it's like, cool. This is the, cl the closest your answers represent are this candidate. So that's what you like. Is so, that so? That's exactly my idea, except it goes right to the bill, not the candidate. Right. But yeah, same thing. That's not a but, bad idea. But yeah, but it but it does it because I'm assuming as long the, as it's decentralized and it's not controlled by a yeah. Well, that's company. why I said a local LLM, meaning like it's it's a it's a, a something like ChatGPT that runs on your phone. It doesn't go to the cloud. I'm not against that idea. I think that's actually not a bad idea. I don't. I don't. It it, it would be the future. Of I democracy. don't see going that far because like you like go to chat GPT for advice. I never go to it for advice. I go to it for other things. So like I could never see myself 
being like, what should I eat for dinner? And it goes chicken wings. I'm like, I'm having chicken wings tonight. I just, I, but I, even in the future when it knows, like it's connected to your Grubhub, it knows exactly what you want to eat. It knows your budget. It like looks at you in some way through a camera and says like, this is what you want. And then it just does it. You're going to still want to take the extra time to decide on your own. Yeah. I want the, I want, I want autonomy over my life. I, I don't, I don't think uh, AI should be. I don't know, man. Involved. People say that for a while and then they're just, they get their Grubhub and they get their Ubers and we all get our like quick fixes on social media, even though people know they want real relationships. But we're making autonomous decisions still. I don't see giving up my, my autonomy to, to an algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mostly just that we, it just seems like it's a closer version to democracy. And I kind of wonder if our founding fathers had the same kind of understanding of how a large language model works. If they would have said, this empowers the individual citizen to make decisions. Um, and, and right now, they just it was just impossible. A lot of this stuff with the um, electoral college, too, is just a lot of it just had to do with how weird the world was in 1776. Like, we just couldn't communicate and vote in mass. Do you know what's funny? What you're suggesting is almost like giving up your free will in order to let the algorithm make your deterministic decisions for you. Well, I'm saying like you would trust, like I would trust my girlfriend, Jen, to like order dinner for me. Like she's knows me well enough that she'll accurately get the right food. I'm just saying a large language model can learn what you want and make decisions on your behalf. And it can also do things at scale and do things in places that you don't have time to, to go, which is to like read the actual bills that are being passed on the Senate floor tonight. I mean, you're not wrong. I just, uh, I just, yeah, there's just something about making my own decisions that, that feels like and something if you I have use, to be doing. And if you use blockchain to make sure that like one AI model represents one real person, like with world, you know, Worldcoin. Yeah. That, that's the project where, where Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI is scanning everybody's retina into the blockchain. Oh, that's cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So you get an orb, so you get an orb, it scans your eyes, it gives you a little bit of money. It's a, it's called Worldcoin and it puts you on the blockchain. But something like that which proves who that there's just one um daniel one andre out in the world can then have a large language model that knows that person and vote on their behalf and that's part of making sure that there's only one vote from you so i could see it i'm terrified of it but i could see yeah. it yeah well. I, I love that yeah that stuff you can also delegate you can give your vote up to somebody who's smarter too if they want but i heard you're well we could be done <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that's another but that's another thought you know what i mean like like if there is something with medicine if there's something with medicine don't you want a doctor to make a decision for you like why can't you let that doctor vote for you if it's a medical i feel like people are too skeptical like in general to give up so much of their decision making process yeah i know. You know it makes sense which is a shame because i feel like there are better ways to do so many things so what if what Especially if the algorithm, algorithm says you, you should stuff. have pizza for dinner but you feel like having a burger I have a burger like it just you don't have to like go to this thing you don't even have to have a vote for you if you want but it could and i think a lot of times we do i think a lot of times you're just like, i'm tired just you always pick the right food for me just go do it oh for sure i think a lot of people want to be told what to do yeah like i think maybe even a majority of yeah. people just want to be told what the answer is and just to, you know, but I don't know if that's the right thing or not. Shouldn't we no, all be kind yeah. of taking in the information ourselves and processing it through our unique perspective and so. then making our own decision? I mean, it would be better if you read the entire bill and could vote on it. It's just that not everybody can. So in, in some places where you can't scale is where I think it's the most powerful, but it could, it could be a, a, a good thing if we disconnect and try to be in the real world. Dopamine cool. detox from that slot machine, right? From that, uh, <laughs> from that gambling casino called I'm the Stock hungry. Market. I'm just hungry. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry starving. too. All right, let's, we let's get some do food. It. I'll let AI job. decide for us. It's I'm already here. I'm starving. Yeah, let's go eat. <laughs> okay. All right. Guys. Thanks for yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank thanks you for to the on. one person sweat. that made it this far. <laughs> yes. You're the best. Leave a comment below. <laughs> <laughs> the one Bitcoin fan that's been <laughs> yeah, listening this whole time. Right by Bitcoin. If you made it this far in the comments below. More. Are they going to say buy it again? Actually, that'll look that'll look like spam. Don't write that. Okay. All right, guys. Bye. Thanks.